anybody else in our team still yeah raghavendra uh raghavendra and basraj will join sir uh, can you please uh, call them up if don't mind okay. they are going to join other friends oh great thank you all right people so very good afternoon to everyone and uh, let us welcome to our day 2 training program of everyone i would like to welcome so before starting with day 2 is there any doubt or queries whatever we have discussed in our exercise models in day 1 like with regard to any formula functions or any other features like data presentations or any date related formulas or business maths calculations any doubt any queries no from my side okay great so if anybody is having feel free to ask we can spend 5 minutes max else we we'll start without day 2 all right good afternoon yeah very good afternoon uh, this uh, i had one issue particularly mm -hmm. in the same day <clears throat> see when we are doing this formula for one cell particularly right mm -hmm. uh, I am unable to enter any formula by selecting all the cells. Okay. So could you please uh, mind sharing your screen? Let me see where is the things lagging. Oh, that I have corrected by double clicking in the plus mark. Okay. I have, I have did the just uh, what do you call dragging down and uh, complete that formula well, and, uh, practice. Well, okay. got it. Got it. Where is the thing is? The moment you have designed your formula, you should have selected the entire range. Mm. If you try to create a formula in only one cell, then even you try control enter, it will not be applied for the entire range. So first you have to select your entire range where the solution you are going to design, then start creating the formula. Then finally, instead of enter, go for control enter. Okay, I will practice today and give you the feedback. Okay, no issues. Thank you. Thank Welcome. you for the clarification. Welcome, no problem. All right, friends. So I believe uh, now your silence speaks a lot. So everybody is clear with our day one topic. Let me start with day two. So please open the file, same file what we have discussed yesterday, starting from exercise model. The sheet name is called Goal Seek. The sheet name is called Goal Seek. So we are going to deal with one of the data analytical tool of our Excel naming called goal sick. So please confirm once you open that same file and you are in the same sheet, what I'm showing on the screen, drop me a message by confirming Y for yes. As we have done yesterday, today also we are going to communicate in the same fashion. Okay, Yatish has done, very good, thanks. How about the others? I'm also done. Okay, great. Yes, you can proceed. Fine, total five confirmation. Six. Seven. Eight. All right. So let me take you through the data, what we have with us. Let me take you the background story of that. And then what is the objective that we'll discuss and then how to deal with the same, we'll discuss about it. So I have connected over here with a payroll related data. So everybody can connect because everybody gets salary. So you know the salary components, whatever you have the breakups. So I have taken the salary or payroll related data. So if you notice on our screen, we have got over here, a basic of 40,000, you can see. And DA is 20% of the basic, which is formula driven, you can see. HRA is 50% of the basic, again, it is formula driven. Medical allowance, it is fixed of 15,000 rupees. 12,000 is the uniform allowance, again, it is fixed. And if you see, the monthly CTC is nothing but the comp summation of all these elements over here okay 
And uh, the moment you talk about annual CTC, again, this is nothing but a formula, monthly CTC multiplied by 12. Hope the entire data set, what we have is clear. Yes. Now, yes, yes. now the requirement yes. is, now the requirement is, let's stay focused on my audio, what I'm trying to say. Suppose say there is a vacancy in my team. There is a vacancy in my team and I need a candidate. So I have approached to my recruitment team. Please get me a suitable candidate. This is the JD and this is the role. This is the profile he yeah. has to uh, work with and you please find a suitable candidate. So my recruitment team, what they did, they just done the process with filtering some candidates. They found one candidate for me and to retain him in my role, I have to take the final level of interview, the technical round, the final round, you can say, because HR people, they will do all the rest of formalities. But technically, that person, how much he is sound over here, whether he is the right person I'm looking for, I have to take a call. So my recruitment team, they have given me that candidate's profile and asked that Prabhas, you can carry out your final interview and you please let us know whether that person is fit to the role. So I took the interview. I uh, asked so many questions that person is able to answer everything. It's the right fashion. And he's having a good technical knowledge also and uh, as well as academically highly sound qualified even. So I decided I should retain this candidate. So now discussion is over, come to the compensation part. So for that role, we have a fixed CTC of 11,40,000. So I offered that candidate XYZ, whoever, that we are going to pay you 11,40,000. But that person is not happy with the offer. So looking at his face expression, I asked him, if you have any expectation, you can very well express to us. Then he said, uh, Prabhas, everything is fine. If you can offer me 14 lakhs of CTC, I'm ready to join immediately. Well, so I have now a problem. What is the problem? I do not want to lose that candidate, but if I accept his offer of 14 lakhs, what would be the breakup of my salary? I have to first find out. And in the meantime, what is happening? My management has given an authority to me that Prabhas, you can take a candidate, whichever you like the most. Uh, guys, anybody's mic is on. Could you please uh, put it on mute so that uh, we can go for harmony of the training program? Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. So my management has given me authority that Prabhas, if you want to hire a candidate and you find he is the right person and suitable to the role. Salary is not a bar, but remember one thing, at any point of time, the basic should not exceed 60,000. So this is what the capping given by the management that at any cost, basic should not exceed 60,000. So now I have got two problems. First, I need to find out what would be the breakup of salary for 14 lakhs of CTC. And once I find out whether my basic is within 60,000 limit or it is exceeding 60,000 limit, that also I need to check before finalizing that candidate or keeping it or retain him. So now to do the same job, what I do, I ask that candidate to be waited at my reception or lobby. I come back to my workplace and I do my own calculations. What is that? I keep changing the basic to 45,000 over here. Then how much it is changing? 12 lakhs, 40,000. Then I again increase to 50,000. How much it comes? 13 lakhs, 44,000. Then I go for 55,000. So like that, I keep changing. And unless and until this total CTC is getting 14 lakhs, I would keep on changing my values of basic. And that is called my hit and trial method. And there is no standalone hits as answer that within five hits, I'll be getting the answer. Within 10 hits, I'll be getting the answer or till the 15 hits, I'll be getting the answer. There is no standalone answer for that. So this is the place where my friends, we spend a lot of quality time for doing a non-productive task. Do you agree with me? The task, whatever we have doing, or I told you the entire story. Hope everybody is able to connect. 
right? Right, right. So now the question is, if I happen to do such kind of calculations with no time, with bringing 100% accuracy, then we have to deal with a data analytical tool of our Excel naming goal seek. So goal seek is the tool you will be finding in the data menu, what if analysis, and there is an option called goal seek. This is the place where goal seek tool is there. But application of goal seek will happen only if with the satisfaction of two rules. So what are those two rules you have to satisfy? Rule number one, the data must be formula driven. So if you look at our data is containing so many formulas, no problem. So data is ready for goal seek, fine. Rule number two, if I go to data, what if analysis goal seek, it gives me a dialog box like this. And the first criteria is about my set cell. So set cell, set cell is nothing but objective cell. So in any data, there will be one object. Okay, so in our case, what is our objective cell? What is our output we are trying to achieve? The annual CTC. So this cell, when I define set cell or objective cell, rule number two says that it must contain a formula. So whichever the cell you consider as a set cell or objective cell, that must contain a formula. So in our total CTC or annual CTC, there is a formula, yes, monthly CTC multiplied by 12. Yes, rule is two is clear. Now coming to two value, how much value you are expecting in annual CTC, how much value you are expecting? What is the expectation of the candidate? 14 lakhs. So I must define 14 lakhs manually over here. That is for sure. You cannot define to a cell reference. You have to always go and define it manually. Now coming to by changing cell, which cell you change so that my CTC will become 14 lakhs. The moment we are doing the things manually, which cell we will keep on changing? The basic one? Yes, do you agree? Basic one. Basic only we can keep on changing because DA is formula driven, HRA is formula driven, medical allowance is fixed, uniform allowance is fixed. So only choice we have, basic. So I have taken by changing cell, the basic cell. Now the moment I click OK, with immediate effect, can you see? It will customize its value to basic to 52,745 and my annual CTC will become 14 lakhs. So immediately I can take a call. So 52,745, which is less than 60,000. So I must retain that candidate without having a second thought or without wasting a single time over there. Isn't it? So this is how you can take a call by using this kind of goal seek tool. And this is really a very great tool Microsoft has ever designed. So whenever you want to do your profitability analysis or you want to go for cost optimization or you want to achieve your break-even point or if you have a targeted output and you have got the inputs in place on a click of button, you can go for it, but satisfying two validation rules over here. So please give it a try and check, is it working for everyone? So what we need to do, going to data, what if analysis, Goal sick. Set cell is the objective cell which con must contain a formula. Then two value. How much is the expectation? Expectation is 14 lakhs. So that is what the output we are expecting. And we have to define it manually. By changing cell, which cell you change? The basic one. And the moment you click OK with immediate effect, Excel will take its own iteration and calculation and it will give the result. And that's the story of our goal sick. So any doubt, any queries in the goal seek sheet, people? <laughs> so taking the live data, keep trying. If at all in any place you find the difficulties, you're unable to apply goal seek, you can very well drop me a mail with your sample data. I can guide you, don't worry about it. But practice is very much essential. And the techniques, theories remains the same, logic remains the same.
All right. So now we are going to discuss the next topic over here. So kindly save all your workbooks and close it. We'll come back to this file again later. So whatever the most expected topics that we'll cover first, if time permits, we'll go for some additional topics. So kindly save all your exercise model workbook file and close it. And here in our sample case studies folder, you will be finding people, there is a file called data analysis. Okay. So kindly open that file, data analysis. So now we are going to discuss something. When you have a huge data in place, how to deal with the same, how to present your data effectively, and how to interpret your data with multiple reports, different, different reports. So basically in one line, we are going to discuss about the pivot table. So as I told you in day one, the agenda, so we are going to discuss now about pivot table. So kindly confirm your data analysis file is opened on the screen and you got the data like this. All right. So now let me first take you through the background story of the data, what we have with us. Now, suppose say my boss asked me that Prabhas, I was going through the reports, uh, whatever we are submitting to the management, but I don't find the quality of information. It is just seeming as if we are filling some numbers and presenting it to the people. And I was there in the meeting also, I could see people's expression. They were not happy with the report output. So my boss asked me, Prabhas, this time we'll do something different. What is that? He said to me, please get me last three years revenue data. So I have gone to my SAP system, given my rest respective T codes, and I got near about one lakh records in this format. What is that format? Name of the dealers we have, product category. These are the different product categories we are dealing with. And these are the product description, actually technical, these are the products we are producing and selling to our customers. Then salesperson, we have engaged to generate the revenue on behalf of steer world. Regions, we export our products, that list is there. Then invoice date or the order date is nothing but invoice date or billing date. And sales in terms of US dollar, we are making the billing. And year of incurrence of sale, month, quarter, and intermediate channel partner, if any, that list is also available. So if you talk about this data, quite comprehensive and huge data. Now, when I got this data and I showed my boss, my boss is looking at the data and he told me, Prabhas, this data is no use for me. You do one thing, you keep it with you. I just want a simple report out of this. What kind of report? So whatever the products we have sold based on that last three years, whatever the revenue we have generated, I want a simple report out of this. Well, in the layman terms, if I talk about this, I have a huge data. My boss is expecting a summarized format of the data. So whenever you want to summarize your huge data and prepare a tabular information out of this, we have got a data summarizing tool called pivot table or pivot table, you can call, not a problem. But the question is where people forget really to check it out. What is that? Whether my data is ready for pivot table. I got my data. I know I have to go and work with pivot table, but my data is ready for pivot table or not. I don't know. So this is the place where people commit a mistake. They don't pay attention to the data and later they face a lot of trouble, but we are not going to commit that mistake. So first of all, friends, I would like to suggest whenever you would like to prepare a pivot table, ensure that three validation rules are satisfied. What are those rules? Rule number one, the data, whatever you have taken, it must contain a field header. Without field header, pivot table is not possible. Each and every column should contain a column header and no column header name should be duplicate. Like dealer, I can retain one column. If I want to retain one more column as dealer, I cannot retain as dealer only. I can name it as dealer one, dealer two and so on. <coughs> so that is the first rule that the data must contain a column header. Well, now rule number two, the amount of data, whatever we have captured, there should not be a single cell as blank. 
So in one line, there should not be any blank cell, but how to know that? You can select your whole data on your keyboard, press Control G, G for Goa. You will be getting this kind of go to dialog box on the screen. If you go and click special, there is a special button. You can see a blanks option is there. And if you click OK, you will be immediately getting a message. No cells were found. Check it out, please, everyone. Select your data, go for Control G, G for Gamma, G for Goa. Click the special button, check blanks, click OK. Are you getting the same message? Right. So it is a confirmation for us. Rule number two is also satisfied. There is no single cell as blank. Now rule number three. Whatever the data you are taking, no column should have the merge data. In any column, merge cell should not be there because merge cells, if you have, it is always creating a trouble. What is the trouble? Most of our Excel functionalities doesn't read our merge data. So it is always better make a thumb rule, avoid using merge cells over there in your data sets. So, Having satisfied with all these three rules, now our data is ready for pivot, all right? Now keeping the cursor anywhere in the pivot, if you go to insert, the very first option deals with my pivot table. In insert, the very first option is pivot table. And when you go for it and click pivot table, then it takes me to a dialog box like this. All right, no issues. Now this dialog box, the data is already selected and it is asking where you want to populate your pivot table in the new worksheet. Let it be, it's better always go and prepare the data reports in a new Excel worksheet. Now, having said this, no changes to be done in this and click okay. You will be finding a blank sheet is going to generate and towards your left side, you will be finding an area where the pivot is going to be designed. This is your pivot table area. This is the place where pivot table is designed. And you can see there is a name also available. So it is a message for us. Each and every pivot table, whenever we generate or create, it has got its unique name. And towards our right side, if you see, we have got an area where all the field is listed over here. This is called pivot table field list. The entire column headers will be listed. And towards our right side, you will be finding small, small boxes kind of structures are there. This is called pivot table field area. You have now only one job. Whatever the respective fields you want, you have to drag and drop, drag and drop, drag and drop. This is the only thing we have to do. But before proceeding further, if you cross check your layout and my layout is not matching. Do you agree with me? Right side, this layout, whatever I have, it is not matching with yours. Can you check it out? Yes, people. Do you get the same layout, what I'm showing on the screen? So in this case, the first job is... Yep, yep. Uh, to some extent, this uh, particular table is coming on the top and the rest of the boxes are coming in the bottom. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm telling. The layout is not identical. Whatever I am showing on the screen, the same layout you are not getting. Yes, sir. Right. So we have to first do the changes. We have to bring the change in our screen. Now, if you compare which layout is giving a comfort zone to work with, my layout looks Papa, better or your I layout? I have problem. Not, you have to select complete uh, sheet. Or no, 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 no. You have to keep your cursor in anywhere in the data set. Going to insert. Anywhere. Yeah. Going to insert. First option, pivot table. Click OK. Yeah. Insert pivot table. There are two options from table range from external data set. No, no, no. Pivot table. You go for pivot table inside again. Pivot table. Right. Pivot table only. Okay. Okay, you don't need to go and go and click that. You just click pivot table. No need to navigate. You just click the pivot table option in the top. 
we no okay, need to navigate yeah so automatically yeah. this will show this kind of dialog box click okay you got a sheet yeah. right so now i request everyone people the moment you go for this the layout option you will be finding we have a settings button over here settings i'm highlighting you can see on the screen if you navigate it will be showing the result there is an option called field section and area section side by side so you have to choose this option from that and you can find the similar layout just like me please confirm you got the about similar layout yes right now as i told you you got to just drag and drop the fields well we have understood what is the task to be done but the question is if i drag where to drop i have got four different field areas so i will tell you the best option is whenever you are working with any field is containing some numbers in place that you must retain in your value field area so whichever the field deals with the numbers you should bring it over here what yeah as ours is a old version uh, we are getting an a uh, different symbol what should be the thing which we should select okay you can share your screen this is i'm talking about 2013 and above if you are 2007 and 10 some limitations will be there if you can share your screen i can guide you one second one second yeah i able to enter Are you able to see my screen? No, oh, not yet. Now, now are you able to see the screen? No. You are okay. Uh, in this option, I'm getting like this: uh, field section and area section state. Second option is a field section and area section side by side. No, you have to go for the second one. Field section okay. and area section side by side. Okay. Now I got it. Yeah. So now, as I told you, that whichever the field deals with your numerical values or numbers, you must retain in the value field area. Now let us focus with the report what my boss has demanded. My boss asked me product wise last three years revenue. isn't it so revenue the billing column is sales usd is it containing numbers what say sales usd is it containing numbers yes so please drag and drop in the value field area so this is the first thing we should do okay now second thing what we need to do over here so first thing we did sales usd over here now what is the second thing we are looking for in the report if you again recall product wise last 3 years revenue so product description over here you can bring it to the row field area product description you can bring it to the row field area now you can ask me a question prabhas can we bring it to columns yes you can bring it to columns but in our excel we have got more rows than columns so product may be in number but other things if you look at month or year maximum hardly 10 to 12 variables only we can work around so the column which is having the less variables we should retain in the columns the columns which is having the more variables we should retain in the rows now what is the next thing we, my boss is looking at product wise revenue report for the last 3 years so there is a year field we have that we take it to the columns so this is what the setup you have to bring it on and the moment you bring it you will be finding your pivot is ready with a beautiful format over there can you see have you got the same setup people yes right yes now what is the total we have received in the pivot table the last cell 319253 sorry 319253 did you receive the same everybody yes sir yes. right yes. so now we are in the right track and enter data whatever huge data items we had we have converted the data into pivot table but the data is not ready for dispatch 
though pivot table is ready, but we cannot send this pivot table to the next level. Why? And what are the things lacking with? How to make it better? The first thing is always make your pivot table look and feel better. So how to make your pivot table look and feel better? Keeping the cursor in the pivot table, if you see, there are two options activated in the ribbon, naming pivot table analyze and design. Depends. Some people may be having analyze only, or some people will be having the options tab, depending upon the version of Excel. But design will remain the same for everyone. So going to design, going to design the last tab, there are a lot many styles are available. So go for more style over here. This is your more button. Okay. And it opens up light, medium, and dark. So if you recollect, I told you yesterday <coughs> in format as table option, which option we should take? Anybody? Light and, light and medium. Light and medium. I told you exclusively not to take the dark options. What was the reason behind that? Size Absolutely. Size. Very good. So uh, our Excel file size will be more. That's why I take light or medium. So I took one medium category out of this. The moment I took this, now can you see compared to the previous version of pivot table, now the look and feel is somewhat better. So this is the minimum data formatting you must do in your pivot table whenever you make it ready. This is the first step. All right. Now, next thing. If you see this pivot table, the first column, what it is displaying, what it is displaying, I'm highlighting, you will be finding the same also. It is displaying as row label. See, this is steer alpha 18, steer omega 30, steer SF 40. What are they? They are my products. Do you agree with me? These are my products. Yes. But yeah. the header of pivot table, it is showing as row label. Now, how a layman is going to understand by reading this entire text, whether this is my product or this is my stock or this is my accessories or this is something else. So what is the problem in the pivot table? Though I have got a field name, that field name is not properly defined in the pivot table. So this is one more problem. And here, our experts, they will suggest you go and manually edit the field. Don't ever do that. How to bring the same field name in the pivot table, I will tell you. Keeping the cursor anywhere in this pivot table, go to your design tab in the extreme right, design tab. From the left, third option, report layout. I repeat, keeping the cursor in pivot, going to design. From the left, third option, report layout. And there, we have a option show in tabular form. We have a option show in tabular form. And the moment you click that with immediate effect, can you see the same field name immediately appears in the pivot table? Right, people? Everybody is getting? So this is what the second step, whenever you are making the pivot table ready, you have to do the minimum formatting like this. Now my data is ready for dispatch, no doubt. But the question is, how will I know that my entire one lakh records from the source data sheet, it is properly exported to pivot table? Or is there any data loss? Or is there any line item missed out out of this? How will I know that? So I need to confirm at least. I cannot believe blindly in Excel, correct? So now the basic question is, whenever you want to compare two reports, what is the best way to compare? The best way to compare is the total. If the totals are matching, reports are okay. If totals is not matching, then I have to go and check individual line items. So our pivot total is already there, 3199253. Now in this summary table data sheet, Look at the same and tell me which column total should match. Anybody? DC. Should be the G column, right? The billing column, if the total is matching with my pivot table grand total, both the reports are same. 
there is no line item missing. I can confirm. What do you say? Do you agree? My sales UST column, keeping the cursor anywhere, go for control down arrow key. I'll be reaching to the last row item. Go one step down, make a total. What is the shortcut to make a total? I told you yesterday, alt equal to. And when you go for alt equal to, you can see the total is ready. Hit enter. Now check this total. Is it matching with my pivot table grand total? This total, is it matching with my pivot table grand total? One second. Yeah. Yes, right. So those who got the things are matching, we are in the right track. So this is how you have to first confirm before sending this pivot table to anybody, XYZ, customer, vendor, my superior, whoever. So this is how you have to always establish a control in your data. what is the shortcut uh, uh, key for the uh, sum alt equal to alt equal equal to sign yeah for a quick sum no i'm not getting it but set of alt is trying to yeah i got it yeah uh, Prabhas, one more thing. Uh, yeah. what is the short key option you have used to compare to come come to the end Control, control, down arrow key. So control and down arrow key for reaching to the bottom. Control up arrow key to reaching to the top. Yeah, figures are match. Right. So we have confirmed now our pivot is matched and data is ready. Now, the moment I would like to present this data to the people, Nowadays, remember one thing, friends, the audience is having a different level of expectation. When you present your data as it is, nobody likes it. So what audience is expecting? That you should present your data in such a way, it should tell the story to the people. So how to present my data effectively so that people would be happy watching the same? So what you can do, keeping your cursor in the grand total column of the pivot table, the last column, anywhere in any cell of the grand total, right click on the same right click on the same go for sort and do sort largest to smallest keeping the cursor in the grand total column in any value right click sort largest to smallest and see the beauty what kind of story we got it that from the entire product from steer ms20 we got the maximum revenue from steer alpha 18, we got the least revenue. So anybody can make out, even a layman is also sitting, he can understand what I'm trying to say. What's it? Yes. So this is how we come to know how to prepare a basic pivot table from a huge data items, satisfying all the validation rules, doing the minimum data formatting, bringing the field column names over there in the pivot table and finally presenting the data in the form of a storytelling format so kindly rename the sheet as pivot one kindly rename the sheet as pivot one oh, sorry <clears throat> Uh, Ravas, yeah. just to recall, can you can you just in a uh, brief it in a brisk way that from the beginning to the end in a simple way, is it possible? Yeah, we can do that. Not issue.
see we have a huge data our objective was to prepare a summary out of this and to prepare a pivot table out of a huge data items you have to satisfy three validation rules and the rule says that we should have a column headers in place no column header name should be duplicate there should not be any blank in the data over here and there should not be any merge cells also so these are the three rules you have to satisfy and once you go for preparing your pivot table you need to go to insert pivot table and then you have to go and click ok now based on the requirement product description we should put populate in the row area year in the columns and sales usd since it is containing the numbers we should retain in the value so we got our pivot ready but the problem is the look and feel of the pivot table is not looking so great that's why going to design change the design to medium light anything over here so if i go for it now my changes are happening not issue now the second thing is the column headers and the row labels it should be exactly taking the field names which is not taking for that reason go to design again report layout and show in tabular form then to confirm my report total is matching with my pivot total what you can do is keeping the cursor in sales usd we have gone for and we have made a total of that and this total 3199253 is it matching with our pivot table total yes we confirm so entire line items of one lakh records or whatever xyz items it is properly exported to pivot table but finally i told you that you have to present your data in the format of a storytelling format so right click in the grand total any values right click sort largest to smallest so what is the story it is now throwing to me or any audience who is looking at my data he can make out out of the entire product steer ms20 is generating the maximum revenue for me and steer alpha 18 is the least revenue for me all right great thank you right. right so this is what we did and we have renamed the sheet as pivot 1 so pivot 1 is clear for everyone i guess any doubt any queries in pivot 1 no we know right now kindly go for right click on pivot 1 sheet name pivot 1 sheet tab where it is that name right click on that you will be getting a small pop up like this and there is an option called move or copy what is that move or copy so go for this option move or copy and when you click it it will take you to a dialog box like this and in this dialog box there is an option called create a copy check box is not activated so you got to activate that check box and once you activate the same click okay you will be finding a clone of pivot 1 is coming up please rename the same as pivot 2 so pivot 2 is ready Yep. So by I think you know by default it has come like pivot one uh, bracket open two or uh, bracket uh, open two or bracket close has come. Right. If it so has come, if it has come well and good. If you did not get it, then you have to do it manually. Right. Now once you have got the same over here, let us discuss what else we can do with regard to pivot table. So stay focused with my storyline. the moment i have presented my data to my boss my boss is watching the data and he's quite happy and what he said he was this report is really nice the way the pattern what you have taken last 3 years data in three different columns and all the product details in the rows this is really giving me a helping hand to analyze the data but you have given me only the three years data over here i want to go for more deep dive analysis on the same i want to go for macro level of analysis on this report this is what he is asking so what is the meaning by macro level of analysis nothing but 
along with the year when you do month wise analysis of the data that is nothing but macro level of analysis so the first thing you should check ask yourself do we have a field called month check it out please do we have a field called yeah. month yes we do have so problem is solved only thing is we need to bring it to the right place so please bring month to the row area please bring month to the row area and you see a beautiful pattern of your pivot table is going to come over here right pivot table structure is changing you can see completely so where is that pivot table this sheet out if you keep your cursor in pivot this will be activated if you keep okay, your okay. cursor in pivot okay. you'll come month you have to bring in uh, row area row row Now, once we bring this, remember one thing, people, each and every pivot table, they convey their own story. So being a professional, we need to understand whatever the pivot table we have prepared or we have created, what kind of story it is going to convey to my audience. So now let us discuss that. No need to do anything. Just look at my screen. My boss asked me last three years revenue data. Step one, we have given last three years revenue data. What was his immediate requirement? His immediate requirement was along with the years, month-wise data. So month-wise data is there, no doubt. The elements, whatever the need, things needed for report, it is ready. But if you see, the report is still having emphasis on the product description. Though month is there, month is there in column B. So priority is changing, preference is changing. Your priority is still lying with our product description. And my boss has never emphasized upon product description anymore. He was looking for, along with the years, only month-wise data. So instead of defining the month in column B, month should be in column A. So basically, we need to interchange the column to meet the requirement. So if you look at our row area, what is the first field we have? Product description. What is the second one? Month. So bring product description below to the month and see the beauty now. Report structure changes. Last three years revenue data in three columns and month-wise revenue. So can you see the changes in the report structure? Can you make out? So this is how we have understood a simple interchanging of the field, how the entire pivot story is changing. Now, once I made this, my boss was happy watching the pattern and he's telling, yes, Prabhas, this is what I was looking for. But his focus has gone to the data area. And when he is watching the data area, there are so many cells are having blanks. Can you see? So many cells. Blanks are there. Now he is having a question in the mind, Prabhas, why there are so many blanks? So, why there are so many blanks? Any idea? Anybody? No sales in that. No, no revenue. Those. Yeah, it means we have never sold a single product to any of the dealers on that particular month during that year with regard to that product. Simple message. But that we have understood. The people whom we are presenting, they cannot understand this. So they will be asking this question. And when people are asking question, leaving all my day-to-day -day activities, I have to keep explaining to my people. Now, when I'm explaining to my boss, giving a helping hand to understand the data better, because he's also answerable to someone. But when I'm explaining whose premium time is being wasted, whose time is being wasted over here? As an audience, if I ask you, I have already done with pivot. But again, my boss is asking presenter, question. Presenter. So definitely. Presenter. Yes. So technically, when you are focusing with my storyline, my premium time is being wasted. 
but who is held responsible in that is it the mistake of my boss he is asking question or is it the mistake of mine no. i have given the opportunity to my boss to ask the question it's our mistake definitely so what we have understood that whenever we prepare the pivot table if your pivot carries this kind of blanks it is our duty to replace all these blanks with some kind of predefined text either zero hyphen nil not available not applicable something like that then only we can stop people asking unwanted question but how to do that here our experts they will suggest you go for copy paste special value that is ruled out from pivot table i'll tell you the best technique in pivot table go for right click on any cell in pivot table go for right click on any cell and an empty cell right yeah right click on any cell not only empty cell in the cell which is having value any. also no problem okay. from the bottom second one pivot table options from the bottom second one pivot table options if you click that a dialog box appears and where you will be finding one option we do have naming call for empty cell show a box is there for empty cell show a box is there can you see yeah in this box you have to fill whatever you are expecting the output you can fill that zero hyphen nil not available in a anything but i would recommend always go for zero since we are dealing with numbers and the moment you go and click okay with immediate effect you will be finding all these blank cells whatever we had as it replaced with the zero text yes so everybody is able to do that right click on pivot pivot table options from the bottom second one and going to over here for empty cells show So please confirm everybody has done. Why for yes? now once we have done with this then my boss is quite happy with this output he is not going to ask any further question pretty sure but the problem is what he is saying that prabhas i am just looking at the product wise details but when i am reaching to a particular product say steer omega 20 i am unable to find out which month that data is again i have to come back and see in the top then only i realize this steer omega 20 belongs to january month why don't you do one thing why don't you fill the month column in all the cells so that in any row item wherever i am looking at i can come to know which month that data belong to so basically my boss is expecting the pivot table month column should be filled with respective month names so how to do that i'll tell you keeping the cursor anywhere in pivot table go to design and there we have a option report layout from the left third option we have a option called repeat all item labels what is that repeat all item labels if you click it automatically see the changes on the screen what happens my entire month column is readily applied with the month names to those blank cells can you see is it happening repeat all items then yeah yeah yes yes so this is how we have seen in our pivot table number 2 people that how to interchange the pivot table columns if there is a need then how to deal with the pivot blanks and replace with some text then how to fill the month column with repeat all item labels if any variables 
is having so many blanks places, then how to repeat that? And that's the story of our pivot table number two. So any doubt, any queries in pivot Papa, table? last one can I explain? I was not there. Last one. Design, report layout, repeat all item labels. If it is not there, it is because of the uh, version of the software, like, right? Yeah, this is available from 2010 and above. If you are in 2007, it will not be there. Yes. All right. Now we have done with our pivot table number two. Now right click on pivot two sheet name. Right click on pivot two sheet name, move or copy. Then create a copy checkbox you can activate. And click OK. So one more pivot turns up, you can rename the same as pivot three. Now, let us discuss what else we can do with regard to pivot table. So please stay focused with my storyline. Now, this is the report I have prepared and presented. My boss is quite happy watching the same. He's saying from us, this pattern is really good. Taking three years data in three column, month-wise data to analyze. So product-wise, month-wise data, I could analyze and make out my report. But I am done with that now. So boss is saying he's done with the product description. So he's saying, this report layout let it be there but instead of product description now i am more interested watching the dealer wise report what he's saying instead of product description dealer wise report he wants to see with the similar layout so first of all keeping the cursor in pivot which is unwanted for my boss product description so deactivate the checkbox product description in the field list, deactivate the checkbox product description. Now what he's looking at, dealer. Do you have a field called dealer? Yes. So please bring the dealer field to the row area and see the report now. Dealer wise, last three years revenue data with regard to months, anybody can analyze. Yes, people. So I guess everybody has got the similar structure of our pivot table. As I have been telling you friends, each and every pivot table, they throw their own story. So you need to understand what kind of story my pivot is going to give it to my audience. So blindly just preparing the pivot doesn't make any sense. You need to keep yourself in your audience shoes. You need to understand. Okay. Anyway, now coming back to the report, let us go and interpret this report let us go and analyze this report no need to do anything just look at my screen suppose this is the report i have prepared and presented to my boss what is my first customer aditya enterprises do you have the same yes now my boss is looking at aditya enterprises in the 2014 year january month no revenue when he scrolled down to feb some business is there good sign when he goes to March, there is no sign at all, no business. Aditya Enterprises, April, no business. Again, May, no business. But in June, some business is there. So likewise, a particular dealer's data, when he wants to analyze for the whole year, he has to scroll down 12 times. Can you imagine? He has to scroll down 12 times. And that is what my boss is not happy doing the same. So he is telling me that Prabhas, this report is there, data is there, but it is not giving a comfort zone to work with. 
because I have to always crawl a lot. I have to navigate a lot. Why don't you do something? Why don't you prepare a report in such a way? When I open the file, the entire dealer's history, I could see only one interface. I no need to navigate much. I no need to scroll a lot. This is what my boss is giving a requirement. So how to present it, meeting the requirement. What we can do, if you look at your row area, there is a field called month. Take that month field to the column area. So in row month is there, just take that to the column area. Now, can you see the report? The entire dealer's history will be there in one column. Yes. But the problem is, how many columns you have landed up with? If you look at, you have landed up with near about 41 columns. Can you imagine? So how to present a data having 41 columns? And suppose say my boss has not seen this and he asked me, Prabhas, while coming to my cabin, please get me a printout of that pivot table. Now, how to take a printout having 41 columns of data? Not possible. So this is not the ideal way to present my data. So now in this case, how to present my data effectively to my audience? Let's see. So first one minute, you please watch my screen, what I'm doing, understand. Next one minute, you can try. If you look at my screen, in my year column, there is a cell called 2014. No need to do anything. Just look at my screen, 2014. Okay. And I'll be selecting that cell, right click on that cell. There is an option over here called expand and collapse. Expand and collapse. And when I go for expand and collapse, there is an option collapse entire field. And when I go for collapse entire field, can you see the beautiful transformation? What happened? Entire three years data, it just came into three columns, creating a plus symbol. Technically, that is called your radio button. So any point of time, if my boss wants to see only 2016 record, I can only click on that plus symbol. So 2016 data alone will be expanded. Unwanted data, I'm not showing to the people. Unwanted questions are not going to come. And once my presentation over, again, I'll be clicking on that button and my data will be restored. So this is how you can present your data effectively to the audience when you have got multiple data in columns and rows combination of the data. So this is called expand and collapse button. Please give it a try. Keeping the cursor in B4, right click, expand and collapse, collapse entire field. And check if you click the plus symbol, whether the data is being expanded. Again, you click the minus symbol, data is being restored. Yes. So this is how you can present your data effectively. And that's the story of our pivot table number three. Any doubt, any queries in pivot three people, anybody? So pivot tree is queue. So we proceed for the next. So everybody has understood people. Any doubt, any queries, feel free to ask. Don't buy hard the things because you need to understand the logic, what we are doing, why we have taken such fields in the rows, why in columns, you need to understand that. If the logic is not clear, then there's no point of 
spending time over here. So any kind of confusion arises, please feel free to make it clear. All right then, let us go for pivot three sheet name, right click. Move or copy. Dialog box appears, create a copy. Checkbox needs to be activated, click okay. So one more pivot turns up, please rename the same as pivot four. Now this data presentation is over. Let us remove the unwanted data like dealers. You can deactivate. You can deactivate the month also. Bring product descriptions to the rows. What we did, we have deactivated dealers. We have deactivated month and we have brought product descriptions to the row area and we got our first pivot table ready. So please confirm you got the similar structure what I'm showing on pivot four right now. Then we'll discuss further. Uh, can you repeat it? What did you do? You have to deactivate dealers from the field list. You have to deactivate month. You have to bring product descriptions to the row area. What is the first thing to deactivate? Product. Dealers. That is okay. dealers. Dealer, right? Yeah, yeah, dealers. Then? Then you have to deactivate month. Month, okay. Then you have to bring product descriptions to the row area. Now, once we brought this over here, let's discuss what else we can do with regard to pivot table. Now, suppose say, this is what I have presented to my boss. My boss is quite happy with that. And what he is telling, please stay focused. He's saying, Prabhas, you have given me only last three years revenue data. Yes, I have given last three years revenue data. So he's telling, I just want to know to generate this much of revenue, how much incentives we have paid. So boss is expecting that I should tell him how much incentive we have paid to generate this much of revenue so that he can make the analysis or comparison or some kind of comparison of the data in terms of revenue versus incentive. Well, that we are clear. So the first thing, do you have a field called incentive? Check it out, please. In the field list, do you have a field called incentive? No. So our problem starts. We do not have the data. Okay, keep that things on hold. Technically, in the corporate, while we are working with whom we pay the incentives to the salesman, to the sales agent, to the salespeople, correct? Yes. Whom we have paid, that is none of my boss concern. Boss is not interested also watching that. But what he wants to know, how much we have paid. Okay. Now, take an example that in our steel world, we have a uniform policy. Whoever the salesman, from north, south, east, or western zone, whatever the billing he makes, he will be entitled for 2% incentive. Suppose he makes the billing of 100 rupees, he will be getting directly 2 rupees to his account. So that is what the uniform policy across tier world we do have. Okay, that's fine, very good policy. Now the question is, we do not have the data, but we know how to compute incentive. If that is the case, then how to bring that incentive field to our pivot table? Well, so when you do not have the data, we have an option. What is that? Go back to the source data. Go back to the source data. That is summary table. What is the last column we have? 
channel partners yes then go on prepare next column name it as incentive and there you type is equal to as you discussed 2% on which column the billing yes, column the billing column so 2% multiplied with our sales usd column simple the moment we hit enter we got our first incentive ready and we know one thing once you got your first incentive ready the same how to apply to the down just double click on the fill handle the drag button and enter column will be ready with your respective incentive details Can you repeat the formula? Yeah. Sales USD multiplied by 2%. Give us two minutes break. Now? Two minutes. Only two minutes. I'll take a tea and stop. Okay. Yeah, it's time. Tea has come. Okay, so then we'll take 10 minutes break. Okay. Why unnecessary? Yes. 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 All right, people. So now it is 315.325. Again, we are going to meet. So we'll discuss the rest. Yes. Yes. Thank you. So I believe everybody's back. Could you please respond in the chat box? Why for yes? All right. So we were discussing in pivot table number four that when uh, my boss was demanding for incentive data, we do not have the data, but we know how to compute it. And for that reason, we have come back to our source data. We have created a new column called incentive. We have applied our formula and our entire column of incentive is ready. Now, when I go to my pivot table number four, how to bring that incentive field? That is what the question. So here, our experts, they will suggest you go for pivot table over here anywhere. And if you right click on pivot table, there is an option called refresh. So if I go for this option refresh, does it take my incentive fields populated in the pivot table field area? No. Why it is not taking? The reason is right click refresh will work only if you have the data in existing range if your range is expanded in terms of columns and rows this is not going to work then what is the option we have to avail keeping the cursor in pivot if you go to your analyze or options or pivot table analyze options whichever depending upon the version of your excel there is an option called change data source there's an option over here called change data source and when you go for change data source over here, it will take your mouse pointer to the source data sheet. Here, you no need to do any changes now. Just take the horizontal scroll bar towards your right, then you realize what is that field 
exactly it is taken the last one is the k you can see the virtual dotted line technically our data is appended up to column l so what you need to do is basically in this box where k is written that alone you have to go and update with l the k column value has to be updated to l column value. this is the only changes you have to do and once you have done with the same and click OK. Can you repeat it again? Because I joined the now. OK. See, we have to come back to our summary table. We have got our incentive column ready. And once it is ready, coming to pivot table number four, go to pivot table analyze or yeah. an options or analyze tab, whatever it is. There is an option called change data source. Change data source. You got to click that. And when you go for change data source, it will automatically take your cursor to the source data sheet. And there you can see our data item. It is taken the range up to column K. But technically, we have got your data ready for column L. So having said this, in the range where K is written, that alone we have to replace with L. So this is the only changes we have to do. And once we do the same, click OK, with immediate effect, you will be finding below to incentive, I mean, below to channel partners, you got your incentive field ready. And once you find incentive field populated in the field list box, ideally incentive field, what type of data it is holding, the numbers, and I told you already, the field which carries the numbers, the best way to retain where, in which place, values that's it now see the moment i go for my values i got my pivot table ready and it is not only showing a total incentive but also your year wise whatever the incentive we have paid my boss will be able to analyze so this is how we have understood that whenever we do not have the data not to be panic we can always create a new column in our source data sheet and the same we can bring it over there in our pivot area by changing the data source and applying the necessary field area so give it a try any difficulties do let me know So any doubt? Yes. Hope it is clear. Yes. Right. Now. So coming to our pivot table number four sheet name, right click on the same and go for move or copy. Create a copy checkbox. You can activate and click OK. So one more pivot turns up, you can rename the same as pivot table number five. So incentive work is over. You can deactivate that field, not a problem. And you can bring your data set back to the first pivot table, whatever we have designed, the same structure you'll be getting. All right, now let us stay focused. The data, whatever we have prepared, looking at the incentive data, boss is able to analyze the data. He was quite happy with the same. And we know one thing when boss is happy, what happens? Yeah. 
Yes. Is expected an increase is small. That's right. Forget about promotion increment and elevations. That doesn't happen immediate effect. Immediate effect, what is happening? Only the expectation level, expectations level goes high and the workload increases. And the same thing happened with me. What happened? My boss is saying, Prabhas, you have done a great job. I am done with incentive. Now I want to know while making this much of billing, while making this much of billing, how much discounts we have given to our dealers. So my boss wants to know now the billing amount versus the discount amount he wants to analyze. So again, the first thing first, check. Do you have a field called discount? Check it out, please. No. Again, the problem starts. We do not have a field called discount. Okay, keep that in hold. Now, in our steel world, we have a uniform policy like our incentive. We have a policy too for a discount. What is that? Whoever the dealers, though he's a small buyer or a bulk purchaser, whatever it is, how much quantity he purchased from us, he will be entitled for 5% discount. We give uniformly 5% discount to everyone. Okay. So now the question is, we do not have discount, but we know how to compute it. Now the same field, we are to go for our pivot table report to be prepared along with discount. What is the choice we have? Like what we did for incentive, the similar fashion, can we go back to the source data, create a column called discount and bring the same to pivot table? Can we do that? Yes, people, I told you the entire story. You know the demand from yes. the other side. So my we question is, do. yeah. Yes, Yatish, you were saying something? You can go, I think so. Okay, great. So that is what we learned and immediately we can apply the same. Now, no need to do that. Don't, don't, don't be in the hurry of making the discount column. Okay, let's analyze the situation. See. Creating a new column in the existing data sheet, adding our necessary formulas, unwantedly making my file size heavy, unwantedly making my formula length more, slowing down my Excel file process, bringing the same to pivot table by changing the data source and analyzing over here and bringing the same to value field area. So much of drawbacks. First of all, to do the entire stop, minimum five minutes we are spending. It's a waste of time. Secondly, because of that additional column, my file size is also getting huge. So this is the reason why I never recommend to do such kind of operations or neither Excel also advise to do the job like this. This is what our experts, they will suggest you to do or to have some ready-made solution at your workplace but Excel never recommends for that. So now, if that is ruled out, if what we did in incentive calculation is ruled out, what is the best option we do have to go for discount? So any point of time in pivot table itself, if you happen to create a column called discount with application of your own formula, then how to create it? That is the objective. So for that, what you can do, go to your grand total this is what the total cell of our pivot table keep your cursor there this is the first thing then go to your pivot table analyze or analyze or options tab there is an option over here called fields items and sets if you are in 2010 and above fields items and sets if you are in 2007 there will be an option name called formulas and within that, we have an option called calculated field. So please confirm, first of all, everybody is able to navigate or find out this calculated field. 17 and above, what, what option will get? 2010 and above. 2010 and above, you will be getting this kind of options like calculations, fields, items, and sets, calculated field. If you are in 2007 version of Excel, instead of fields, items, and sets, you may be having an option name called formula. 
formula and in formula you have an option called insert calculated field so i believe everybody is getting this calculated field option now the moment you click that it will take you to a box dialog box called insert calculate field the first criteria name name is the new name what is that discount please define the field name as discount then criteria number 2 formula in the formula box whatever it is written please remove the entire stops make it clean we are going to design our own formula and as we discussed for discount formula what should be 5% on the billing amount so billing amount is there sales ust you can see in the field list double click on the same and when you do double click it will automatically get embedded in my formula box now multiply how many percentage five percentage that's it so we have done our name renamed as discount second we have gone to formula cleaned everything then from the field list sales usd double click multiply by 5% now the moment you click okay with immediate effect you will be finding your pivot table will be coming up with necessary value so what we did let me first take you through completely so first we have gone for discount then we have gone for step to sales usd double click then multiply by 5% and finally we have gone for okay button All right, people. Everybody is able to follow. Now, once I click OK, with immediate effect. you will be finding one more column is ready naming called discount and along with that year wise discounts also i am able to showcase to my people so this is how we have understood that whenever there is a need you don't need to go back to your source data and create a necessary column in pivot itself you can do the necessary columns by going to fields items and sets and calculate field So that's the story of our pivot table number five. Any doubt? Any queries in pivot five? So for insert, you also put it like that also. Simple. Like that's right. Absolutely. So everybody is clear. Could you please confirm in the chat box why for yes, so that I can proceed. In one, yeah. 
right click on pivot five sheet name move or copy create a copy checkbox you can activate and click okay so you'll be having one more pivot is ready you can rename the same as pivot six okay now the unwanted column like discount you can deactivate so don't worry don't be panic if i deactivate discount later if you want you can't get it no there is no such kind of limitations you want you can always bring it on it will be the integrated property of your pivot table only but incentive is your real time field discount is your virtual field but both will be there don't worry now we got our pivot table structure back to the pivot table number 1 now let us see what else we can do with regard to pivot table now i'm going to take you through one of the most important feature of our pivot table so which is going to save a lot of time for you in fact so let me take you through the same and please stay focused with my storyline this is what i have prepared and presented to my boss last 3 years revenue data with regard to multiple products my boss is quite happy with the pattern what he is saying pravas this pattern is really good the pivot table pattern but you have given me only one pivot table yes i have given him only one pivot table now what i am expecting is based on the salesman so whoever the salesman are there based on the salesman similar layout of pivot table i am expecting from you so basically in one line if you want to say boss is not happy with one pivot table boss is expecting multiple pivot tables but the layout should remain the same the pattern should remain the same so if that is the case then how to deal with so first of all check do we have a field called salesman or sales person or sales agent or something like that sales person yes so our problem is solved data is there fine now no need to do anything i am just doing the trial and error for on behalf of all so please stay focused on my story see i got sales person i took it for the row area my pattern is changed boss is not happy i took it to the column area my patterns is there but sales person details are missing if i take it to the filter area my patterns remain the same no doubt and pivot table field is also appearing with the salesman so i'm quite happy with that now what i did i took this report and i went to my boss and i told him sir you want multiple report right okay do one thing go to that sales person filter choose that filter select one salesman name click okay now entire pivot table will become of data of salesman 1 only thing is you have to create one more sheet and copy this pivot table and paste it over there so this is the only action you have to repeat for number of times depending upon the number of sales person this is what the kind of suggestion or advice i have given to my superior now just understood the story line yes now you give me your opinion if you were in my boss place would you be happy with my statement the way i have explained no well so what would be the reaction from the other side suppose any point of time if you suggested your superiors to job do the job like this what kind of reaction you'll be getting i will tell you see the moment i explained the whole story to my boss my boss looked at my data and he again stared at me and he gave a plastic smile you know plastic smile bosses are good at in fake smiling right so he gave me that now what he is saying stay focused with that he is telling prabhas i am really impressed with your smartness the way you have diverted the entire responsibility towards me i like that now if i am happen to do your work let's do one thing tomorrow morning when you come to office please bring your resignation letter with you i would be happy to sign on that this is the kind of reaction my boss had given so pretty clear we know one thing we cannot divert the job responsibility towards our superiors that's for sure so now the question is what my boss is expecting from me 
stay focused. No need to do anything again. My boss is expecting over here. I'll tell you. See, suppose say I am working with a global data and I have got 200 salesmen across the globe. How many? 200 salesmen. And what my boss is expecting is job number one. First, he's expecting I should go for insert worksheets. How many? How many people? 200. So definitely I need to go for 200 worksheets. No doubt about that, isn't it? So 200. Job number two. I should copy pivot table and I should paste it in those 200 cases for 200 times. Total 400 task. Job number three, select filter with salesman name for how many times? 200 times. So total 600 task. That is also not enough for him. Finally, my boss is asking, rename the worksheets with salesman name and that too, 200 times. So total, how much task over here? Can you imagine? 800. So how long it will be taking for you, anybody? Make it off estimate, don't worry. I'm not going to give that work to you. Yes, Madhukar, Madhukumar, what's your opinion? How long it will be taking for you if you get this kind of task to be delivered? Three to four hours. Three to four hours. Are you confident enough that you can deliver it by three to four hours? If yes, if you if you do it, trust me, I'll be giving 5,000 cash prize immediately. Trust me, friends, even though you take whole day, even though you take eight solid contact hours, there is a big question mark whether you will be able to do or not. The reason is, I'll tell you, when you will be doing such kind of task, when you are going to work with 200 Excel sheets, one Excel file, sometimes system doesn't support. Excel not responding. Excel stopped working. Excel is restarted. Windows is hanged. All these problems are there. Can you ignore that? What's it? I'm talking about a real-time situation. It's not a story. It's a real-time situation I am bringing in front of you. So can you ignore all these errors, whatever I said? You cannot ignore. This is definitely going to come. This is definitely going to happen. Now, whatever the committed hours, you will not be able to deliver the report and definitely that is going to leave a negative impressions in your KRA. So now take an example, same eight to 10 hours of job, whatever you have the task. If I make it happen for you, uh, anybody's mic is on, could you please keep your mic on mute? Yeah. So that eight to 10 hours of job, if I would make it happen for you, just in 10 seconds, trust me, 10 seconds, how much of quality time we can save, isn't it? So let's do that. So now the objective is any point of time, if you happen to export your pivot table data into multiple reports on a click of button, how to do that? So the first thing first, based on which field my boss is expecting the multiple reports based on the salesman, so bring salespersons to the filter area. First, you bring salespersons to the filter area. Okay. Now, once you have brought this, then keep your cursor in that filter. The salesperson B1, you can see in my case, filter is there. You don't need to click that filter button. Select that filter cell only that filter button cell alone you select. And what you need to do now, going to your pivot table analyze or analyze or options tab towards your left, the very first option deals with your pivot table. If you click pivot table name is there. Below to the pivot table name, there is an options tab. And in the options towards your right side, there is a small navigation button is there. 
small navigation button is there. You can click that. And when you click, it opens up with three different options. Options, show report filter pages, generate get people data. So go for the second option, show report filter pages. And the moment you click that, you will be finding a dialog box appears. And which field is it already in selection? Salesperson and recall. What is my boss is looking at? Same salesperson voice fields only? Yes, click OK and see the beauty. On your blink of your eyes, your pivot table will start exporting the data into multiple sheets. Can you see that? Having the pattern remains the same, filter also selects the same, and sheets are already renamed with the salesman name. Can you imagine how much time you can save? So this is called our life savior option of our pivot table. Trust me, I have seen people literally sitting and doing the copy paste work at the year end. But if you know pivot table better, you can save your lot of time. So this is called our exporting pivot table data into multiple reports. So check it out. Is it working for everyone? How is that option helpful? Absolutely. So that's the story of our pivot table number six. All right. Now let's do one thing. Right click on pivot six sheet name move or copy create a copy checkbox you can activate and click ok so one more pivot turns up you can name it as pivot 7 Now, this salesperson work is over. You can remove that checkbox from salesperson. You can deactivate from the field list box. So now we'll see what else we can do with regard to pivot table. Okay. So keeping your cursor in pivot, keeping your cursor in pivot, okay. Go to your pivot table, analyze or analyze or options tab, depending upon the versions. We have a option called insert slicer. We have a option called insert slicer. Okay. Now, when I go to- I'm facing problem. When I'm placing, when I'm placing the cursor on the table, right? Uh -huh. The fields are not getting popped up, right set. Okay. okay, on pivot okay. table, go for right click. Do you find an option in the bottom called show field list? Yes. If you oh, click, yeah. no, okay. now it will come. The insert slicer? Yeah. Okay. When you go for insert slicer over here, if you click, it will take you to a dialog box like this. Okay. Now, the moment you want to go and work around with your slicers along with your pivot table then what you need to do is you have to always follow a rule whatever the fields already taken in your pivot table you should not choose again from the slicers box because that will be amounting as a duplication of your fields doesn't make any sense unwantedly it is going to occupy the space of your interface so it's better whatever the fields apart from pivot it is you are going to work you can choose out of that so for the time being suppose say i want to see the region wise report so there is a field called region you can select that checkbox region you can select that checkbox 
And the moment you click OK with immediate effect, you will be finding a region checkbox is on. Right, people. So, can I get a confirmation that everybody has got a region slicer ready along with your pivot? Yes. Fine. Now, if you see the region slicer over here, it is not giving such a great look. So what we can do, if you select that slicer, you can see in the extreme right of your ribbon, there is a button activated, slicer, design, options, again, depending upon the versions. And this options will be available only in 2010 and above. Earlier, it was not there. Only 2010 and above versions only, you'll be finding these options. And here in this slicer, we have got multiple slicer styles, okay? If you go for more option, it opens up with two broad categories, light and dark. So you can choose whichever you like the most. I go for dark one. Now you can see the look and feel of the slicer is somewhat looking different. Right? Now, over here. What is the beauty of doing this? So now suppose say I want to see a particular region data, say Belgium. So if I go and click Belgium, only Belgium data will be displayed on my screen. If I want to see only the data for Australia, I can click Australia, this is the data for Australia. If I want to see Russia data, I can click Russia, this is the data for Russia. On a click of button, everything is happening. So that will be very, becomes dynamic over here and people will love to see such kind of reports on a click of button. And if you do not want to showcase this data, you want to restore your data once the presentation is over, on the slicer top right corner, you will be finding a option called clear filter in the top right corner of the slicer. And if you click that, automatically what it happens, the data becomes refreshed, the data becomes restored. So this is how we have understood how to make use of slicers integrate the same with pivot table and working visually from the outside of the pivot area and make the data presentation dynamic. Any doubt, any queries as such? No. Right. Now, once we have made it, once we have made it, slicer is there, pivot is there, no doubt. But the moment you are presenting your data to the management people, especially, they are not happy with these numbers, large numbers when it is there, they are not happy with that. What they're expecting that when you're presenting your data, it should tell the story to them. And basically they're expecting the data in terms of a graphical format. Because to instantly intimate the answer compared to last year, where do we stand? Compared to last quarter, what is our business scenario? Compared to last year, are we, growing or not in terms of revenue. So to showcase all this information, it's better to go for presenting the data in the format of a chart. So select your data, keep your cursor anywhere in pivot, keep your cursor anywhere in the pivot. Going to analyze, going to analyze or pivot table analyze or options. We have an option called pivot chart. We have an option called pivot chart. Able to see everybody pivot chart. When you keep your cursor in pivot table, go to analyze or options tab, pivot chart option will be available. And when you click it, it will take you to your entire chart family. It will take you to your entire chart family. And by default, cluster column is in selection. Let it be, no need to do any changes. Click OK. So when you click OK with immediate effect, you will be finding a beautiful chart turns up. Right? So we can close this window.
right so pivot table is there pivot chart is there my slicer is there now any point of time if i want to showcase the details for a particular year say 2014 i can see in my pivot chart itself some ready made filters are there like year filter over here product description over here or you can operate around from your pivot table itself also so which year data i want to showcase suppose at 2016 i can go and choose 2016 so only 2016 records will be displayed on the screen and 2016 records over here in terms of your lakhs and crores so anybody who is interested in seeing the data in numbers they can see anybody who's interested to see the data in terms of charts they can look at this and if you want to showcase only for the country of usa so click usa ultimately what will be happening this is what the data for usa so what's the story 2016 records these are the products we have sold to our usa counterpart and this is what the product wise revenue we have made so what is happening your slicers your pivot table your pivot charts everything is integrated together and that's how the moment you present it people will love to see that and this is how you can use all these elements to create your dashboards using pivot table and once your presentation is over again you can restore your data by simply clearing the filter buttons all right so things are more dynamic can you see isn't it yes right so this is how friends you can work around with your pivot table so any doubt any queries in pivot 7 if you have you can ask me because we are going to conclude our pivot table topic with this we'll be going for the next topic so before conclusion of our pivot table topic if you have any queries you can ask me so that we can clear and we'll proceed further So for your information, what you can do, I'm going to take you through, see the improvements I'm talking about. So this is my chart over here. Okay. During the practice, you can do all these things. So what you can do, I have got a slicer. I'll go to slicer. I can distribute the multiple columns. I can go for reducing the height. Okay. Over here. Then I'll be looking at the slicers, more columns, right? Right. So unwanted row items I can delete simply. And these things I can extend it up to the line item like this. Now see how it is adding more beauty. The moment I click any data, based on that, the real time changes, it is going to showcase on the screen. Looks cool. Isn't it? Now, suppose say you do not want to showcase your pivot data. What you can do? This slicer, you can reduce the width. This chart, you can cover your data in this format and operate only with slicers and charts. Like UK, this is the status. Argentina, this is the status. If anybody is not interested watching the pivot table data, so you can cover temporarily and you can showcase your result. So this is how you can work around. So those things during the practice, you have to explore all these things because we have a time constraint. If there is a 16 hours of training program, I would have made more in depth of that. But yes, I'm giving an overview what you can do with pivot. All right. Fine then, so kindly save all your Excel files and close it. Now, we are going to discuss our sample case studies folder 
there is a file named called exercise models. Okay. So now we are going to discuss some more formulas and functions which will be helping us to make our job easy in our routine activities. Well, so you can go to the sheet name over here. Okay. The sheet name is called conditional formula. The sheet name is called conditional formula. So please confirm this sheet is open on the screen. Then I'll proceed with that. Now, let me take you through what is the data we do have with us. Suppose say we have got the entire employee's date of training, name of the employee, division they belong to, salary they draw, and training expenses incurred on behalf of them or on them or upon them. So entire picture is there. Now, based on this, we need to answer all these six questions over here. So if I want to do, let's start with the first question. What is that it is saying? Suppose say count occurrence of division HFD. So basically in division column, how many times HFD is appearing that we have to count and get the answer. So basically what we need to do, criteria based counting to be done. So when you have a criteria based counting to be done, we have a ready-made formula naming called count if. What is that? Count if. What it says range. So which range we have to deal with the division. Come on. Now what's next is the criteria. What's my criteria? HFD division. So HFD division, I can take the cell over here from the division column like this, or I can go and define within two double inverted comma HFD. So whichever it is comfortable for you, you can go for it. And the result is on. There are 28 cases over here that we do have HFD division in the division column. And this is called nothing but the criteria based counting any point of time. If you happen to do, you can go for it. All right. So count if, are you getting 28? Please give it a try and let me know. 28 answer. All right, now we'll go to our next one over here is count salary that less than 150,000 US dollar. So basically in the salary column, wherever it is less than 150,000, that alone we have to make a count. So again, criteria based counting to be done. So we know what we done, count if. So when I go for count if, it's asking range. So range is my salary. Of course, the complete salary, I have to take it, comma. 
Now, what is the next thing it is asking is the criteria. What's your criteria? Less than 150,000. So remember one thing, whenever you go for this less than, more than, less than, equal to, more than, equal to such kind of criteria, you must define within two double inverted quotes less than 150,000 like this. This is mandatory because this is a formula which is already predefined by Microsoft Excel. Only thing is we have to follow the instructions. So we are following the instructions. And the moment you go for this, there are 51 cases we found the result. And again, this is called criteria based counting to be done at any point of time. Abhinand, what happened? Why you are sharing your screen? That's what. No, you should have asked me because I believe I am sharing my screen. People are watching that. Yes, sir. No, whenever you are doing, please uh, let me know that. If you have any queries, you can share your screen because people believe that they are watching my screen. So everybody is clear with question number two's answer, people. 51, are you getting the same or any doubt, any queries? Pravas, I feel you stopped sharing your screen. Can you share your screen? No, I did not stop share. Because Abhinand, she took the, I mean, he took the, upon, I mean, he started sharing the screen. So it is overridden because everyone is having the similar competency level. There is no admin level or host level over here. Everyone is able to share the screen. All right, so considering that the question number two answer 51 is everyone, we are getting the same. Let's proceed to question number three. Some salary for division RAD. So what you need to do in division column, first we need to identify wherever RAD people are there, then corresponding salary, we have to make a total. So basically, we have to do a criteria based sum over here. And to do a criteria based sum, we can go for a formula again called sum if. So when I go for sum if formula, what it demands me, the range. So where is the criteria range? It is my data in the division column. Yeah. And the moment when I go for this over here, what it demands me, criteria. What's my criteria? Division RAD. So I can take a cell reference where RAD is already defined or within two double inverted quotes, I can define RAD. Comma, what's the next one? Some range. Which range you'll be applying the sum formula in the salary? So we can take the entire salary over here. And the moment I hit enter, I got my results ready. So this is what we have got the answer. Whenever there is a need to do the criteria based sum over here, we can go for a simple formula, sum if. So check please, the sum if you are getting the answer, 90 lakhs, 9064787. Hope this is clear. Anybody is getting a different answer or any queries?
All right. Now we are going to deal with the question number four, some salary above two lakh US dollar. So in salary column, wherever more than two lakh dollar cases are there, we have to make a total of that. So basically what we need to do, a criteria based sum. So we can go for a formula, sum if no doubt range, where is the salary, isn't it? Then what we need to do, it is asking for criteria. What's your criteria? Above two lakhs. I told you already, above two lakhs, we must define that is more than two lakhs within two double inverted quotes. Now, comma, as per the question, what it is saying, which range you will be applying the sum over here in the salary only. So since my range and sum range is the same range, no, there is no need to define again your sum range and extending the formula unwantedly. So we can complete our formula with the criteria itself. And the moment I hit enter, I got the result. So one crore 32 lakhs 63,214. And this is called again, the criteria based sum any point of time. If you happen to do, you can go for some if formula. So question number four, answer. One crore, 32 lakhs, 63,214 with some if. Hope you haven't got the same. Anybody is getting a different answer? Got the same number. Yep. All right, now let's go for finding the answer for question number five. Some salary more than 50,000 US dollar, but less than 150,000 US dollar. So basically which column you have to deal with in the salary column, wherever more than 50,000, but less than 150,000 cases are there, we have to make a total. So we know that whenever criteria based sum to be done, we have a formula called sum if, but here, the criteria numbers are more than one. So when you have more than one criteria based sum to be done, sum if is not going to help me. We have to go for a formula called sum ifs, sum ifs, so sum ifs. The moment you go for sum ifs, what is that it is asking, sum range, which range you will be applying the sum formula in the salary, obviously. Come on. Now this formula is a bit peculiar. So let's have the understanding about this formula. What's next? It is asking me criteria range one. So as per the question, if you discuss, what is my criteria range one? I have defined the sum range where to need the sum, but now ask me. Okay, so if you believe more than 50,000 US dollar is my criteria range one. Now after criteria range one, what my formula is demanding? Is there one no, 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 no. After criteria range one, read what is that formula demanding? Criteria one. So what I'm supposed to define there then? So what we have understood, more than- Criteria range I think, Great, greater than symbol. No. 
more than 50,000 is our criteria, but where to search more than 50,000 cases, where you are going to search? What is that range? Is salary only? Do you agree? More than 50,000 yeah, cases will be serving salary? So that is what is demanding. So criteria range one is nothing but our same salary range you have to go and define. So two times we have to define. It's not about don't remember by two times. The requirement is different. Some range is different. Criteria range one is different. Since our requirement is lying in only one column, I am defining two times. Got it. Right. So criteria range one, we have got it. Now what's the next one? Criteria one. So as for the question, what is the first criteria? More than? More than 5,000 US dollars. 50,000. So within two double inverted codes, more than 50,000, you got to define that we know very well. Come on. What's the next one? Criteria range two. So as per the question, what is the second criteria? Less than $150,000. Where to search? Again in the salary? Same thing. Right. So go and give the again one more time the salary range to define as your range. And the moment you go for the next criteria two. So criteria two less than one lakh fifty. So less than one lakh fifty into double inverted course. That's it. So this is what you have to always keep in mind when you go for some ifs formula criteria range. It is always more important. You have to keep in your mind. So in place of criteria range one, do not give the criteria one. And the moment you hit enter, you can see this is going to give me the result 21,99,323. And that is what more than one criteria based sum to be done any point of time. You can go for this formula and get your result. Very, very helpful. While designing the dashboards, templates, summary reports, these functions plays a very, very great role. So please confirm you got the same. Any doubt, any queries, you can ask me. So everybody is clear what we did. Anybody is getting a different answer, zero or something like that. All right, now let us go for our question number six. Find the total training expenses incurred between 1st August 2019 and 31st January 2020. So please find the answer for question number six. You know how to use count tape, you know how to use sum if everything. So please find the answer for question number six. And once it is ready, just let me know the answer.
Yes, people. Anybody got the answer? Between two training dates, whatever the training happened, how much expenses we have incurred, we have to make a total of that. Eighty-four thousand eighty-four. Prajul has given the result. Okay, so Prajul, could you please guide to others how to go for that? Prajul, I'm waiting for your support. So what would be the formula so that we can help to our other friends also? Could you please let me know? See, filtering the data, sorting the data, getting the answer is not the right way. That is just to cross check whatever I am doing, whether I'm getting the right result or not. But when I'm going for the dashboards and all those things there, we have to be very careful. All right. Now over here, our friend Prajal is giving me some helping hand, stating the formula should be like this. Okay, great. Very good. So here, Friends, why we are unable to find out the answer? We got some ifs clear, right? All right, let's go for it. Is equal to some ifs, some range. Which range you will be having the sum formula to be applied? Obviously, the training expenses. So go for taking the training expenses, the data range. Okay, this is my sum range. We got it. All right. Now, what is the next one it is asking? Criteria range one. So as per the question, my first criteria is whatever the training happened on 1st August 2019 and above, I should consider. But where to search? The date has to be searched in the date column. Yep. Then it is asking criteria range right. one that is done criteria one so criteria one as i told you precisely you have to give so you should not exclude first august you have to include first august also so you have to go for more than equal to first now here the check you have to understand see the date when you are taking as a criteria, you should follow the same date format, whatever in your data you do have, like DDMMYY or MMDDYY, not an issue, but the separators must be your system separators. If your system separator is using hyphen, you must use hyphen. If your system is having the separators date column called your slash that is called forward slash you must use the same as forward slash so that is what the catch you have to always remember while defining the date related criteria so suppose say i go for first august i'll go for august 2019 well 
that makes my criteria range one or criteria one, right? Now criteria range two. So whatever my second criteria, okay, that is 31st Jan 2020 and before that, whatever the training, but where to search again in the date. So when I go for the date, that is becoming my criteria range two. And what is the next one it is asking? Criteria two. So what's my second criteria? Is it, I mean, that is double quote, less than equal to 31st hyphen Jan hyphen 2020. The moment you go for this and the moment you hit enter, you'll be getting your result over here. So that's again, multiple criteria based sum. Whenever you want to go for it, you can go for this kind of formula called sum ifs. So I believe everybody is getting the same. Any difficulties, you can let me know. And these formulas are very, very helpful. Whenever you go for walking around with your dashboard, summary report, tabular report, you can use it. Yes, people, all clear. Yes. Any questions? Could you please confirm in the chat box those who have done? Y for yes or D for done? Okay, so two confirmation I have received, Tamaya and Nadu, they are done. How about the others people? If you are not clear, you can ask me, feel free. Don't just buy hard the formula. It's not this, just a situation specific. So you need to understand why we are applying this and why this logic is being done, why double quotes are there, why less than symbol, less than with equal to why. You should know all those things. If it is clear, well and good.
Okay. Next, we go to the sheet name called Lookup. There is a sheet name over here called Lookup. So we are going to discuss the most powerful formula of our Excel naming called VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. So this is one of the most demanded topic. The moment I took down your uh, the expected topics, so most of the people they were looking for how to use all these things. So we are going to discuss one by one. So first we'll go for our VLOOKUP, then we'll go for HLOOKUP, okay? Now, coming to VLOOKUP, V stands for vertical lookup. V stands for vertical lookup. So why this V lookup and H lookup comes into picture? What is the role they play? Whenever we are working with corporate, we deal with many more data or huge data items. So when you are searching some records or say, take an example in the literal terms or layman terms, finding a drop of water in the ocean. If you are trying to search, then it is very difficult to do it manually. That's the reason why we have to use our VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. Whatever the things we do manually, the same thing will be done by our VLOOKUP formula. So it will be more clear when you go on further discussion on the data. See, take an example. Suppose you want to purchase a new laptop. So you have maintained a list of brand whatever the brands you know you have maintained a list of brand in excel and in one excel file and you kept it ready then you went to a shop where the shopkeeper is dealing with various brands of laptop you requested him that could you please help me with a catalog based on the laptop brands whatever the rates you are having could you please give me a catalog the vendor has given a catalog like this now, taking the catalog, you have come back to your home. You have opened that Excel file where the brands are there. And now the job in front of you is respective brands corresponding data rate column. You have to furnish the rates by looking at the vendor's catalog. So if I happen to do that job, how will I start with or where to start and how will I do? First, I'll be looking at my data. Where is the first brand? Acer. Yes, I will take that. Then I will go and check where in the vendor's catalog. Acer is there? Yes. How much is the price? 22,000. Finding the same, I'll come back to my data and I'll populate the result like this, 22,000. Then what's the next one? Apple, again, I'll take that. I will check this vendor's catalog. Apple is there? Yes. How much is the price? 45,000. I will populate over here, 45,000. So this is how I'll be doing the job one by one brand purpose updates of the rates. I'll be doing it if I happen to do the job manually. Do you agree with that? Yes. The same thing when you ask Excel to deliver the job, Excel will be taking the help of VLOOKUP formula. So whatever we did manually right now, the same thing is done by VLOOKUP overall. But how to write that formula? Don't worry, I will tell you. But what we did manually, the same thing is done by VLOOKUP. So no need to do anything, just look at my screen for a minute and understand the concept. Is equal to VLOOKUP. I have taken lookup value. VLOOKUP is asking lookup value. Lookup value is nothing but what we have with us to search. So what we have with us to search, yes sir, I take that. Then what it asked me, table array, where to search? Brand entry, that is the vendor's catalog. All right, then comma. What is the next thing it is asking? Column index number, C-O-L stands for column index number. So now in this border area, that border you see, the maroon color border area, which is given to the catalog. In this border area, how many columns we do have? We have got two columns. And what is the first column? Is the brand. What is the second column? Is the rate. Because we need to always read the data from left to right. And when you have this, then what is the data already with us out of these two columns, which is already there with us, the brand one? What we are looking for, we are looking for rate. And rate is in which column? Rate is in second column. 
since in this border area two columns are there you should not read by the column header c and d you should not read like that you should always read within that border area so now column index number is 2 <coughs> comma then we look up is asking range look up true false exact match approximate match it's quite confusing and the moment we did the job manually we never discuss something like that then why we look up is making the things more complex valid question but ignore that and ensure one thing <coughs> that we look up always ends up with zero just remember that we look up always ends up with zero now the question is what is the significance having zero over here zero is nothing but it will act like one to one match or exact match so whatever the data we have a c e r if it is there a c e r then only corresponding second column data will be populated for that reason zero bracket close formula is ready only for a cell but i need to apply for the rest as we know control enter we got the data but the problem is some cases the vlookup formula doesn't pick up the value which are the cases dell samsung toshiba is it not there in my windows catalog all are there then why it specifically did not pick up all these three value the reason we know we have seen in dell formula also that when we copy this formula towards down the vendor catalog range is moving down isn't it so this is why it is trouble so though i am looking for acer or i am looking for toshiba it has to always search in this array only this array should not move down or move right so for that reason we have to select our solution and which is creating a trouble c3 to d13 and what kind of locking system we have to go for no movement so f4 once i told you yesterday three different types of uses of your dollar symbol f4 once no movement column and row locked f4 twice row only locked column movements will be happening f4 thrice column will be locked but row movement will be happening but formula is rectified only with one cell need to apply for rest control enter and got the data so this is how whenever there is a need you can go and apply your we look up formula in this fashion so please give it a try those who were not clear with we look up give it a try and let me know is it clear any doubt any queries Even though a small glitches is also there, please feel free to ask. Uh, Prabhas, how to log that uh, F4 three times? Can you just repeat that uh, option? Yeah, you have to go for selecting the range. 
you have to wherever you want to lock it the moment suppose say c3 to d13 is creating a trouble so this is general this is called the general cell now if i use my keyboard shortcut f4 key over here that is if it is a direct key then i can use f4 directly if it is not a direct key you have to use function with f4 function key with f4 key so now the moment i go for this f4 once means no movement because column and row everything is locked the two dollar symbol before c one dollar symbol making column lock before three <clears throat> one more dollar symbol making row lock so the data will not move either c3 will not move to c4 or neither c3 will go to your d3 also no movement is going to happen so this is called locking your entire range and when you go for control enter you got your data rectified got got yeah yeah so we need to first select those uh, particular cells uh, range yeah if you want to go for control enter then you should select if you do not select then you have to go and suppose say you have just rectified in one cell that can be done but after that you have to go for double click on the fill handle to apply for the rest yes people we look up is clear for everyone any questions from anybody okay how about the others i mean uh, see i am getting only max on 3 25 so we have around 5 9 to 11 people okay great great fine so now regarding the application we look up can be applied in two different excel files no problem we look up can be applied in two different excel sheets in the same workbook it will work like charm we look up can be applied in the same excel sheet itself top to bottom left to right no problem so now coming to our h look up very rarely in use but yes it has got its uses also so whenever your data is in horizontal format you have to go for h look up because v look up is not going to help you in that state so we have a data you can notice over here and this is suppose say you treat as your vendors catalog what is that vendors catalog now below to that we have got a list of brands where i need to fetch the rates for the same in the bottom row by looking at the vendors catalog so if that is the case as we know first select your solution area yes we have gone for equal to h lookup h lookup is having the similarities or similar pattern or similar logic like v lookup only so in place of v we are using h in place of column index number we are going to use row index number rest of logics are same so when you go for h lookup do you see it is asking for again lookup value like v lookup asking for lookup value h lookup also asking for lookup value and i told you what is the meaning by lookup value the value which you have with you to search so what we have a sir comma this is asking table array i told you table array where to search table array is my vendors catalog so you can start from brand or you can start from samsung whichever it is you for you convenient for you you can do it and we know one thing when i copy this formula towards right this range should not move right so for that i need to lock it f4 so if it is not a direct key function f4 comma what is the next one it is asking row index number we look up it was asking column index number so since my data is in horizontal format in this border area how many row items we have data brand and rate two row items which is the first one brand which is the second one rate and which data is already there with you is the brand what you are looking for is the rate and rate is in which row item two 
So we should not read by the row headers. We should always confine our area of operations to the border area. Within that border, whatever it is happening, that you have to always cooperate. Now, comma, as usual, range lookup, true, false, like we lookup. It was asking. I told you, we lookup. How it ends up with, and we lookup always ends up with zero. And what is the significance of zero? Exact match or one to one match. So I'll go for zero over here. Bracket close. Formula is ready only for a cell, but I need to apply for the rest. Control enter. So when I go for control enter with immediate effect, I'll be getting my things ready. So this is called my edge lookup, horizontal lookup. So whenever you have the requirement, you can go for V lookup, edge lookup, depending on the requirement. If your data in vertical or horizontal, respective. So give it a try with edge lookup. Any doubt, you can ask me. All right. Now, the moment we go for VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP people, though we have got the data in vertical or horizontal format, but there are certain rules you need to always satisfy when you go for application of such formulas. So what are those rules? And how will I know that where the rules are satisfied or not? I'll take you through. See, whenever you go for VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP, okay, what it says, the VLOOKUP, I'll take you through. So this is my VLOOKUP rules, and this is my edge lookup. See, so rule number one, VLOOKUP says that data has to be in vertical format, then only it will help you in application. So what is the meaning by vertical format? See, in our case, our data is over here in vertical format and we able to apply the same brand is over vertical, here also in vertical format, we can apply, fine. Similarly, for edge lookup also, it shows that the data has to be in horizontal format, then only it will help you to application on that. Well, this is the first rule. Rule number two, VLOOKUP says that there should not be any duplicate. There should not be any duplicate where in the vendor's catalog, the master data or master list, anything you treat that, there should not be any duplicate. What does it mean? See, the moment we got our catalog from the vendor, okay, when vendor has given the catalog in the brand column, the name should not be duplicate. Like Samsung, more than one time should not be there. Acer, more than one time should not be there. If it is there more than one time, then it considers duplicate. But what VLOOKUP does, it always picks up the first value by default. Reason? Because it understands in the range, whichever it comes or appears for the first time, that is the unique value and the rest are duplicates. That's why it picks up the first value. So you have to ensure that there is no duplicate in the master data. Rate may be duplicate, no problem. In my data, maybe duplicate, no problem. But in master data, brand column should not have the duplicate. 
So this is called our rule number two, no duplicates should be there. Similarly, for edge lookup also, there should not be any duplicate. That's also mandatory. Coming to rule number three, VLOOKUP says that the data flow has to be always left to right. Data flow has to be always left to right. What does it mean? I'll tell you. The moment we have gone for our vendor's catalog, okay? Now the vendor, if he has given the data in this format, by mistake, suppose, then VLOOKUP cannot read your data from right to left. So that is called data flow has to be always left to right. Now, it's not necessary that red column has to be immediate right to the brand column. It can be like this also, no problem. But you cannot consider the data selection like this over here and consider this as the column number two. No, you have to always select like this. You cannot go for selecting the data range and hiding these columns and taking these two columns as columns. No, because though you hidden all these things, still this is the property of your data range. So you have to be very careful. All these three rules you have to satisfy. The third rule is data flow has to be always left to right. But in case of edge lookup, it says that the data flow has to be always top to bottom. So always you have to remember all these three rules whenever you go for application of our VLOOKUP or edge lookup. Hope all these three rules are clear. Any doubt, any queries? If you have, you can ask me. So VLOOKUP, how to apply? Edge lookup, how to apply? We are clear? Yes, people? Yes. So any doubt or queries regarding VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP from anybody? So those were not clear. Day one, when I was taking down your expectations, you told, are they clear now? So only thing is taking the live data, you can keep practicing. And if you have any queries, you can very well drop me a mail. Don't worry about it. But practice is essential. All right. Now, the next one over here we are going to discuss is about our data visualization. Data visualization. The sheet name is called sheet three. Towards your left side of your lookup, you will be having sheet three. So all of you have the same sheet? Please confirm. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Great. So let us go and discuss over here the situation number one. Okay. Now, the point of discussion over here, let's first understand the objective. It's not like something I'm just keep on telling and you should grab it or you should grasp it blindly. You should also understand what is the implication of that, where I can implement it, where I can use this, all these things you must know. So let me first connect with that. Nowadays, people, when you are presenting your data in terms of numbers, the numbers are not alone enough for the audience. And audience are no more happy by watching your numbers. The era has become different. So audience is having always a different expectation. And the competition is so high that if you present your data, just simply numbers, people don't appreciate your work. So if you want to make a difference at your workplace, you have to always present your data differently. And to make a presentation, different presentation over here or to present the data a different way, you have to always add some kind of uniqueness or innovations or creativity. For this reason, data visualization is very, very important. And the more important factor is whenever you are working with any kind of dashboards or summary reports or tabular reports, along with your numbers, if you add more visuals, that will be speaking thousand times louder your stories. Okay, so let's go for that now. Suppose say, take an example, my boss asked me, Prabhas, whatever the products we are selling to our customers, based on that, I need a simple report. So category is nothing but product, you can take it. So there are 12 categories of product I'm dealing with and whatever the revenue I have generated, I have got the entire list, all right. Now this is the summary I have prepared. Anybody can do that. I have not done anything extraordinary over here. 
but how to make it different over here from others or how to make some kind of value additions to my work. So what we can do is go to the next column and type over there as visual. Do it along with me, please. Go for the next column and type over there as visual. Okay, select the range of the visual column in this format. Then go for equal to and take the value from left. Go for equal to and take the value from left. And then hit control enter. So when you hit control enter, you can see in the visual column, you have got the similar data of UST column. And why we have taken a long route by defining a reference instead of copying and pasting? Because tomorrow when you update your USD column, you don't need to go and again do the copy paste work. Since it is already formula driven, immediate changes will be happening from the USD column over here. That's how we have done it. Okay, we have understood. Now select your visual column data as I selected, not the header, only the data. Going to your home tab, going to the home tab, you have an option called conditional formatting. What is that? Conditional formatting. And in conditional formatting, we have an option called data bars. And when you go to data bars, it opens up with two different criteria or categories naming called gradient fill and solid fill. So go for gradient fill, any color you like the most. I like this blue color one, so I take this. And the moment you apply, slightly expand the column. What kind of feeling you are having looking at the data? Yes, people, give me your opinion. Give me your opinion. Looks interesting. Yeah, but in, in terms of some kind of adjective, how it is looking good, in what respect, in what aspect? Higher, higher value. I mean, you can able to make it out in a better, higher value, where the lower value. Okay. okay, great. So more or less, it gives a feel of a bar chart. Can you say? Yes. Right. But technically, how it is different from a bar chart, I'll tell you. Though it looks like a bar chart, but this is not a bar chart. This is called data bars. And if you create a bar chart over here, the data will be in one location, bar chart will be in a different location, and that will be going to occupy over here more space. Whereas if you see the data bar style, it is there exclusively applied with individual cells, and hardly it is going to occupy some space in KBs. So this is the reason why nowadays, this kind of visuals are more popular amongst the industries or the corporate professionals, most of the dashboards you'll be finding having this kind of stops. Well, now once you have done with this, anybody can do that. This is a simple feature. Is there conditional formatting? If suppose somebody is not aware of that, he can also do. So now the question demands, how to make my presentation different from others? See, select your visual column, wherever the data bars is already applied, then, Going to home tab, conditional formatting, any point of time, if you want to see the backend rule of the conditional formatting, you have an option called manage rules. Manage rules. So when you go for manage rules with immediate effect, this is going to take you to a dialog box where edit rule option is there, edit rule. And when you choose edit rule with immediate effect, this will take you to a dialog box. This is the place where you can customize the rule according to the need. You can change the bar color. You can change the bar directions. Anything you want, you can do it. But my objective is over here, something different. When you go for this kind of options, there is a beautiful option over here, naming called over here, show bar only. The checkbox is not activated. Kindly activate that. And the moment you activate and click OK, Again, click OK and see the beauty. So what is the beauty? If somebody is interested in watching the numbers, he can see the USD column. Suppose somebody wants to make out by using the bars and he wants to interpret, he can see the visuals over here. Looks something different. 
isn't it? Yes. Right. So this is how friends always try to give some add on to your data in terms of visuals and that will be adding more cherry on the cake. People will love to see such kind of report and see the moment I go and present it hardly you need to struggle when you take this data to PowerPoint. So I copied the data. Now I'm moving to PowerPoint and when I go to PowerPoint over here, how it is going to give me a clean look and people will love to see that I'm going to take you through over here. So this kind of high definition, whatever the colorful gradients over here, it is not there in PowerPoint. And since we have done in Excel, I hardly need to struggle in PowerPoint. So that's the beauty over here and how to make our visual impact more over here. We have understood. And what is that option? Going to home tab, conditional formatting and over here is data bars. So please give it a try. Any difficulties in understanding the same? Any queries generates in your mind? Feel free to ask. So is it clear, people? Helpful? Yes, professor. Right. Now, if everybody has done with this, let me take you through one more step, even more better. As I have been telling you, nowadays, the audience is having a different level of expectation. What is that? When you present your data as it is, nobody likes it. And what my audience is expecting? that I should present my data in such a way it will tell the story to the people. So how to bring that? Let me take you through. So look at my screen, please. I will select category and USD. I will go for right click on the same. There is an option called sort. And when I go for custom sort over here, sort by USD and order largest to smallest. Now see the beauty. Anybody, whoever is sitting in the layman side or suppose the audience is there, what he can make out? From the entire categories, category 12 is generating the maximum revenue and category four is having the least revenue. Anybody can make out? So it's an inbuilt story. It is throwing to the people, isn't it? So selecting the category and USD, right click, sort, custom sort, and sort by USD column, order largest to smallest. Please confirm, are you getting the same? Yes. All right. All right, so now you can see the moment suppose say here I have done and if I take this again to my PowerPoint, right? Now see over here, when you present it effectively to the audience, which one audience is going to prefer? Option number one or option number two? Number two, option anybody, number two. Anybody will like that? So this is how small, small yes. things, but making a huge impact. So this is how the practice you have to develop people. And definitely I'm giving an assurance your data presentation will be taking you to the next level. Anyway, so coming to our first option, this is situation number one by using the data bar style. I will take you through the advantage of doing the same. If you look at our visual column, the data bars, the bar directions are always left to right. Isn't it left to right? Because all the places value is positive. What if I have a negative any point of time? Should be reverse, right to left. We know that very well. If you have a negative any point of time, what should be the color of the bars? Ideally, we go for red. So let's see now. 
Suppose say category three, I am making the changes in my USD column four five double zero some negative. Can you see the beauty? The inbuilt formatting is being applied over here. I don't need to struggle for that. So that's what the beauty of your data bars. So it will be more highlighting, more appealing towards your audience. So people will love to see such kind of things. And trust me, when you present it, people hardly interested watching the numbers. People will be more focusing and biasing with our visuals only. Right? Hope it makes sense, people. Situation one is clear for everyone. What we did. Great. Now coming to situation number two. So when I go for situation number two, I have got the similar categories and USD. I request you create one more column naming called visual. So now expand the column a bit and we are going to see what are the other visualization tools we have in our Excel so that we can extensively use the same. Okay. So let us go and select the USD column data. USD column data and going to our insert we have a section over here called Sparkline. Sparkline. There are three different types of Sparkline. It is there, line, column, win or loss. You'll be finding in the insert tab, insert. And go for over here, naming called column. So when you go for this column options over here, you'll be finding a dialog box appears and it is asking, where is the data? Data is already selected. Now, where is the location you want to define your visual? Is the visual column first cell. And the moment I go for visual column first cell to select, click OK, with immediate effect, it is going to give me some kind of visual impressions over here, which is not so clear, of course. So what we can do along with that cell, the moment we go and reflect over here in this format, select your range. Don't drag it. If you drag, the impressions will be something different. So kindly select your range as I selected and go for merging the cells. How to merge them? Going to home, merge and center. We have an option. So go for merge and center. So immediately you can see a beautiful transformation will happen more or less. It will be giving a feel of a column chart and how to read this. Obviously the first column is about the first value. The last column is about the last value. And I told you when you are presenting your data, ensure your data speaks a story. So what we can do category and USD, right click sort custom sort, USD, and order largest to smallest. Now my story is complete. So what is that option? It's there in our insert. What is that option? Spark lines. And within that- I'm not, I'm not getting the spark line. Which version you are working with? I think it must be 17. Button definitely will be there. Can, can you please share your screen? Let me have a look. Insert, right? Insert. Yeah. In the middle, insert in the middle, spark line will be there. Three different types of spark line line, column, win or loss. No, I'm not getting it. Yeah, could you please share your screen? Let me have a look. Visible? Is it visible now? Yeah, it is there in front of me. You can see. You select you select your USD column data, USD column data. 
No, not the category, UST column data. Yeah. Now go to insert and towards your right side, towards your right side. Right, 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 little bit right. Yeah, yeah, stop there, stop there. No, 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 no. Take left, 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 one step left. Yes. The middle one, column, column. Yes. Oh, it's that one. Okay. Yeah. Then select one cell from the right side, from next to the UST column, select one cell next to the UST column, one cell next to the yeah. UST, next to the UST column G1. Yeah, G7. Yes, enter. Okay. And now you can expand the column a bit, expand that column a bit. No, no, not, not the row height, column width you have to expand. Yes, now select the rest of the cells down, select the rest of the cells and go to home tab and go for merge and center. Click the merge and center option below to wrap text. It is there, yeah. Now select your category and UST, select your category and UST along with the header. No, not there, not there. Yeah, yes. No, not the entire three columns, only two columns, category and UST. Down. Yes. Right click, sort, custom sort, order, UST, and largest to smallest. Okay. Now that speaks to your story. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. So this is how people over here, we have understood that this kind of visuals, how it plays a great role in our data to make enrich them or to make it even more better. And you can add some value towards your presentation. So hope this is working for everyone. Any questions? Can you please explain? Sorry, I missed it. Uh -huh. No, where did you miss it and what you missed exactly? The moment you, you started this, I had a call from my boss, sorry. <laughs> okay, no, no worries, no worries. You can, you, you can share your screen, I'll guide you, don't worry. Yeah, just a minute. Yeah, yeah. Share content. I have to select. Uh, no, share your screen. If you go to the share after mic, we have a share button. You have to go for share your screen or desktop. Anything is visible. Yeah. Window. Yeah, it's coming up. Window, window. No, don't go for window. Share screen or desktop. Screen or desktop out of these two. So can you able to see my screen? Yeah, I can see your uh, screen. It is showing your MS Teams window. You can go to Excel. No, your Excel is not visible. That's why I, I told don't share your window, share your screen. Yeah, now it's turning up. Yes, you can select. Uh, don't include the header, only the data points. Yeah, go to insert. Go to insert. Yeah, click on that. Hold on, hold on for a second. It is going for not responding mode. This is really frustrating, isn't it? <laughs> right. So going to insert towards your middle, come towards your right, come towards your right, 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 and stop, stop there. Yeah, absolutely right. Column, yes. And then location range from the visual column, first cell. Yes, select that cell. Right, click OK. Fine, you got some visual impact. Yes. Now rest of the cells you select, rest of the cells you select for that column. No, including including the first one, including the first one. Yes. 
select the rest then go to home tab home tab merge and center yes below to wrap text is merge and center is there no need to, to go there inside not necessary at all merge and center yes merge and center yeah now select your category and usd column both including the headers and right click sort custom sort sort by usd and order largest to smallest and click okay yeah, yeah. okay thank you so much welcome so i'm taking the control back on the screen friends and now the moment we have gone through this over here see the beauty what else we can do the add-on is suppose you can ask me reverse the other side when you go for data bars you made some colorful presentations can we do something more or less like that yes we can do so i'll let you know please stay focused on my screen the moment we go for our this visual spark lines over here okay i can select and on my ribbon tab in extreme right, I'll be getting a spark line tab activated. You can see on the screen. So what you can do, the maximum column, the highest column you can turn into green, the lowest column you can turn into red, that kind of customizations you can do. So there is an option in the spark line itself called marker color. And when you go to marker color over here, high point, you can choose as green. Again, marker color, low point, you can choose as red. So that option is always on. You can see. And where it is, it's in the spark line. So now, somewhat colorful applications, you can see in your spark line button. Yeah. yeah. Yes, any questions from anybody? Now, going ah. to our situation number three, okay? So we have got two years historical data. Now we are going to present it effectively. So how to present it? So first of all, keep your cursor in column L or after 2020 and insert two columns. Okay. So one column, you name it as growth. One column, you name it as growth. So we know growth column, what would be the formula? Basic mathematics. These people, growth column formula, anybody? First one is you have to select the same first row. First row. Uh, from second onward, you have to. Yeah, yeah. Minus. 2020 minus 2019. Do you agree with the formula? This is the growth, right? This is how we compute, right? Yeah. No, no, no. 2019. Mm -hmm. So 2019 minus 2020. See, yesterday we discussed, right? how to make your data informative, data presentable, all these things. And there, the moment we go for month and month comparison, what we did, Jan minus Feb or Feb minus Jan? Feb minus Jan. So the same thing, current, whatever the value, minus the previous one. Correct. So control enter. We got our growth column ready with our necessary values. So go to the next column and there you type over here called visual and select your range equal to taking the value from left, control enter.
Now, the moment we go for this over here, if I want to apply some visuals in this, what kind of other visual options we do have? Let's have a discussion. So first one minute, you please watch my screen what I'm doing. Going to home, if I go for conditional formatting, we have an option called icon sets. Very beautiful option. So these are the options which will be helping me to turn my boring data into an infographic presentation, which is the hot cake in the market nowadays. Everybody demands for that, wherever you go, whichever the industry you are working with. And this kind of options like your icon sets, data bars, and your uh, say symbols, these are playing a great role in terms of your infographic presentation. So now, when I go for icon sets, it opens up with four broad categories, like directional shapes, indicators, ratings, and all those things. Depending on your data, you can take a call, whichever the option you believe it is more suitable, it is more ideal, it is more expressive, you can apply it. But there is no hard and fast tool, or neither Microsoft has designed any kind of tutorial that if you have the marketing data, you should take this. If you have the HR data, you should take this. But if you ask me, Prabhas, what would be your best recommendation? Yes, I will tell you. If you are working more into the project side or planning side, you can take the shapes and indicators that will be more expressive. If you are working in the HR side where the text-based heavy data, you don't have the numbers, you have more into the text like assessment or your balance scorecard template, or if you are doing any kind of risk assessment, anything you are doing, you can make use of this kind of ratings kind of options, which will be more expressive. And where you are working more into the numbers, accounts, finance, sales, marketing, or HR, the attrition rate you are providing, then you can make use of this kind of directional keys. Again, there is no hard and fast rule. You can take something of your own. So I will take this directional, the first arrow keys combination. Okay, I did it. So please go for application of the same. Selecting the data, going to the home tab, conditional formatting, icon sets, the first rule. Once it is ready, please confirm so that I can proceed. Yeah, it's ready. So I got four confirmations. How about the others? Please, can you repeat it? I missed it. You select your data, going to home tab, conditional formatting, icon sets, and use the first rule from the directional keys. <laughs> Now, let us go and analyze what we have created or what we have presented. Let us go and analyze. So no need to do anything. Just look at my screen. Green color up arrow key comes when the value is in increasing trend compared to the last year. That's fine. Red color down arrow key. If it is in decreasing trend, it is down arrow key. That's also fine. But the yellow color one, if you see, the problem is where the data is in positive trend, that is also available. Wherever negative also, it is there in yellow color marks. That doesn't make any sense. And when you express your results in this format, having icon sets, people will be more confused. So we have to give the ideal expression. So make the rules very simple. Suppose compared to last year, I want to make, if it is an increasing trend, go for green color up arrow key. If it is decreasing trend, red color down arrow key. If at all, in case any point of time, it is the same, the value remains the same, then it should be the yellow color arrow key. If you want to customize such kind of rule, how to do that? That's what our objective. Let's see. Selecting this visual column range, going to home tab. I told you, any rule, any point of time, if you want to see, you can go for conditional formatting, manage rules. And the moment you go for the manage rules option over here, you can see edit rule is there, that's fine. The moment I go for edit rule over here, this is the place where I have to customize. So first of all, the data type, 
I have to change. Why I have to change the data type? Because my data is in numbers. It is showing percentage. So this data type drop down, I have to change to number. Again, the second one changing to number. And over here, what is the first rule it is saying over here? If green color icon you want to see when value is more than equal to zero, it is showing. So more than equal to zero, I don't want. Only more than. So go and change this from over here going to more than this drop down rest of all these results you see everything is turning up properly but the final step do not ever forget as i told you show icon only this checkbox needs to be activated so what we did this data type we have changed to number for both the cases then going to the drop down only more than symbol, then show icon only. And finally, go and click OK. So when I go for this over here, see the beauty. What happens? Showing the result properly. Looks clean. So wherever you see, the value is positive, it is showing the green color up arrow key. Wherever it is negative, it is showing the red color down arrow key. And when you present it, trust me, people will love to see this and this. Nobody is interested watching this J, K, and L column because numbers are always boring for the people. So you have to be very specific what your audience wants. You should not present what you like the most. You have to present what your audience needs. Right? Hope it is clear. Everybody is getting the same. Any doubt? Any queries? Thomas, can you please go to the that uh, edit rule uh, dialog box? Right. Select the rule, select the visual, going to home, conditional formatting, manage rules, edit rule. Yeah, when you have changed that into number, the percentage it was, mm. and here, the values you are, not, the range you are giving, uh, when value is more greater than, than? Only more than. Last year, right? No, not last year, value is zero. See, green color up arrow key, value. when it comes, value remains zero. Yeah, greater than greater than next is greater than and equal right that will be automatically come and finally show icon only this options to be enabled show icon only the value should be zero is it you don't need to change it will automatically be zero you don't need to be worried about that the values are taking it's taking some numbers here no, cannot be. It will never be taking because we have not touched that. If you, unless and until you tamper it manually, it will never take. If you believe it is taking, go and go for zero. Have you changed the data type to number? Both the cases. Wait a moment. I'll take my screen. Yeah, please. Would love to explain. Is it visible now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've selected the inner sheet. I mean, first of all, data. the first number is not applied properly. Not Go to conditional formatting. Clear okay. rules, clear rules, clear rules. No, not managed rules. First, you go for clear rules. Clear rules. First option, selected cells. Yes. Now, again, go to conditional formatting. Icon sets first. Icon set. No, first you go and apply whatever it was there. We delete it. Then you go to conditional formatting again. Yeah, icon set first rule. Okay, you're taking okay. the second one. Okay, now edit rule. That is what ma manage rule. That is what manage rule. No problem. No problem. No problem. Don't go for multiple rules. Let it be whatever you have applied. Yes. Now go for edit rule. Now, first you change the data type to person to number. Again, person to number. 
then go to the drop down first one you change to more than only only more than and choose show icon only no no not don't do the second one and thing yes now click okay again click okay things are ready Yeah, welcome. So I'm taking the control yeah. back on the screen. Now, the moment we have done with this over here. Now, how to give more emphasis where you have done the achievement? See, this is showing the data in icon sets and all those things. But I would suggest what audience needs the most that alone you give it more emphasis. See, how to give that? I'll tell you the flavor. Selecting the entire data, when I go for my data sorting, sort by growth column and choose largest to smallest. So what will be happening where we have made the growth in positive trend that is appearing in the beginning, wherever the data is in negative growth is there or trend is negative, that is there in the bottom. So yes, we have to analyze the data, why there is a decrease in the revenue, but where we have made the achievement, first we are asking people to focus on that. So this is how, what audience wants, we have understood the pulse of the audience and based on that, we are presenting our data. So this is what our situation number three is what going to our home, conditional formatting and what is the rule is the icon sets. So taking the different different set of data from the workplace go for over here hope situation three is clear what we did any doubt any queries people anybody It's clear. All right. Now let us go and select category yeah. and 2019 data only along with the header. Now let me see, we have some data to the left. Okay. Copy that and paste it below. So name it as category and this is my revenue. Okay. So please confirm once your data is ready. Yes, it is. All right, now once we have done with this, so, so far we have seen what are the presentation tools we have to make our visualization more appealing and people will love to see that we have understood. Now we'll see how to take some ready-made chart options help to make our visualization more even better. So taking the data any point of time, if you happen to prepare a chart or graph out of this, select your data and go for a simple keyboard shortcut, Alt F1. So when you press Alt F1, can you see with immediate effect, a chart is populating. If F1 is not a direct key, go with function Alt F1. Are you getting the chart? This keyboard shortcut is working for you people. Alt F1 or function Alt F1 after selecting the data. Yes, it is working. Yes, it's working. Right. 
see a simple keyboard shortcut how it is helping us to bring a chart or plotting a chart anyway now the moment you go for this chart how to make the chart presentation better the first thing over here is once you select your chart you can see two options are activated chart design and format go to chart design in the top okay there are many more styles we have go for the more style and choose the last one the last one why the last one the reason is if you compare the previous version of the chart if you go for the last one it will be giving some kind of intense effect some kind of shadow impact you will be getting all these things okay this is the first thing inside the chart unwanted grid lines are there it looks so messy how to remove the same if you see the selecting the chart right side one plus symbol is there if you click the plus symbol a checkbox called grid lines which is available and it is activated you can deactivate that now my chart is completely clean so these are the two things the minimum formatting activity you must do whenever you want to plot your data in the format of a chart i believe everybody is able to do both the things yes now next thing when i presented my data in this fashion my boss is not happy and he's saying prabhas why you are presenting all the categories with an identical color why don't you go for some kind of multi color option so that we can differentiate our products properly okay right click on any column inside the chart area right click on any column inside the chart area there is an option called format data series and when you go for format data series you will be finding a dialog box appears from the right side of your case the first icon in that is dealing with fill and line and when you go to fill and line within that fill option is available and when you go to the fill option you will be finding an option called vary colors by point the checkbox is not activated and when you do so see the beauty your identical color now it is turned into multi color effect check are you getting the same yes after going to fill what should we do automatic yeah after going to fill within that fill button if you click then vary colors by point checkbox you need to activate Colors. Sorry, once again. After going to fill, very colors, is it? Yeah. All right. So now, once we have done with this. this dialog box work is over now we'll see how to make our chart more informative to make your chart more informative right click on any column and go for add data labels so you'll be finding each and every product wise category wise respective values are embedded in the top over there in the columns right click on any column add data labels you will be finding all the data labels are embedded hope you got that yes now select one of the data label you will be finding all the data labels are in selection first make it bold because the data labels should be readable by the audience that you have to ensure so this is what the data labels by adding we have made it more informative but trust me whatever the chart we are presenting so far right now what we are doing this is an outdated version of your chart nobody likes it and if it is outdated then what is the latest style the latest style it says that if you are having the data labels there is no point of having axis scale if you are having axis scale then there is no point of bringing the data labels in place but if you compare both which one is giving a better view 
data labels or access scale? Yes, data labels. Obviously. So when I go for my data labels, then access scale, select the access scale. It doesn't play any role, but don't remove that. Don't delete that. What I suggest is yes. on your keyboard, press, control, yes. shift, less than symbol, no. keep hitting. Control shift less than symbol, keep hitting over there and it will turn into a marker. So control shift and less than symbol, it will help me to decrease the font size. Okay, thank you very much for Hello, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Now, once you go for decreasing the font size over here, next, the latest style, it says that data label you should have, okay, but Access scale should not be there. So treatment is given. Now the coming to the chart title. Chart title having in center, those days have gone. So you should select your chart title and you have to bring it to the right side. This is the latest style. If you see, uh, or if you're reading the Economic Times newspaper, or if you're visiting any kind of money control site, if you see any big four forms, presentations and everything, you'll be finding all the time the chart title in the right side. That makes more of expressive and having more visual appeal over here well so once we have done with this as i told you in since day one i have been telling you that whenever you are presenting your data when you present your data as it is people don't like it and what people are expecting you should present your data in such a way it will tell the story to the people well so how to make my data efficient enough select your category and revenue column data completely and go for right click sort custom sort sort by revenue column order largest to smallest and see the beauty the moment you click ok what happens the story turns up out of the entire categories from category 12 we got the maximum revenue and from category 4 we have got the least revenue so anybody Whoever is sitting in the audience side, he can make out what I'm trying to say. So even if in my absence, if somebody else XYZ is trying to showcase my presentation, he no need to struggle because my data itself, it is self-implied and it is ready for story. Do you agree with me? Yes. So this is how my friends always make your presentation better by adding more visual appeal by using data bars spark lines icon sets and ready-made charts you know how to make it better so this is it from our chart side and this is it from our excel training side also so any doubt any queries from day one and day two hope you enjoyed the eight hours training program people Sorry, this uh, very much. The decreasing and then increasing uh, the trend you did it. Now, can you just uh, pause again till that? Yeah, you can select well, the it. category in revenue of data selected. Right. Then I go to a you know, sort. Right. Right. Custom sort. Then custom sort. Yeah. Then go to revenue from sort by revenue data. For revenue. Okay. Then smaller, larger, larger stars. Yes. Yes. Okay. Is Atish back? Uh, I don't think so. Is that okay? Alright, people. Any more, any more thing or uh, the session is right? 
that's it that's it from my side so anything from your side any doubt any queries people can ask me or if you want to share the yeah, one common you... one common point uh, some of the, the key the shortcut uh, you know uh, keys in the excel like uh, for, the, for example like you know control h so such things you know if you are aware can just uh, if i mean obviously you know i can you just take us through some of the you know short keys like that yeah, I have given you the entire list of keyboard shortcuts, Tamaya. There is already a list of keyboard shortcuts file I have given, not only for Excel, it's for PowerPoint, Word, Outlook, everything list is given. Only thing is people have to practice. Yes, it is there. Uh, please, a few of them, can you please you know, take us through? <coughs> like no, we have taken, since day one, I have been taking some lot, lot of keyboard shortcuts like control shift three to convert any format to date format, control shift one, control shift percentage, alt equal to, alt OCA, alt HBA. So many keyboard shortcuts we have discussed. If you want, I will take you from specific keyboard shortcut. If you want, I can take you through. So that's what uh, I have already told them. So entire thing is not possible to do it in only shortcuts if I start taking them. I know, not, not, not all of them, not all of them. Yeah. So, yeah. Right, right. Take us. Prabhas, I have one question. Please. That was in here. Please. Uh, see, some if as we did right. the date range right. and we got the sum of from this date to this date. Right. Similar like that, can we do in color coding if no. there is some green color? No, no. Because color, based on the colors, your formula is not going to accept or recognize your things. So color-based options are that for that, you have to write a macro program. Okay. So con can, con can, one option is there, no? Concatenate something. Concatenate is to combine. Like suppose say, take an example, I have got some data. Okay, take an example, if I have something. Right. Now suppose say I have got something called brand and rate. I want to combine the same. So is equal to people use concatenate. Okay. So that I don't recommend actually because this is a lengthy formula occupies more of space. So you can use equal to this ampersand that is combined rate. And this will act like a concatenate formula. Oh, once again, once again. Yeah. Is equal to C3 and D3. Yeah. If they, want, if they want the space in between. Yes, you can go for within two double inverted comma, a, uh, a space, and again go for ampersand. And then the moment you go for the rest, it will be the similar pattern. Okay, and one more option. Yeah. See, in that 25,000 is there. If I want to, in the whole column, if I want to remove one zero, is equal to minus something formalized, right? Yes, you can go for that. Suppose to take an example, I have got, you You want to remove one zero out of this, right? Yes. So yes. say, take an example over here. This is my data. I can go for, is it equal to taking the value over here? Say, you can go for left. Okay. Taking the data, comma, four characters over here I want. So I'll go for this now, 25,000. I'll go for this. We should show the cell number comma four. Apart from that, nothing is there, right? Yes, nothing else. Okay, team, any other doubts? Clarifications is required. Okay, I've already, you know, shared the file, which now, you know, uh, Prabhas you know, took us through and uh, yes, you know, made us to work in that you know, same file. Uh, so which uh, everybody are familiar now. So apart from that, if you have any you know, questions,